All right, look, check this out. This is a fact. Fitness can definitely be the solution or it can actually become the problem. The difference is how you do it. Fitness can greatly improve your health, both physically and mentally, or it can destroy your health. It's all about how you choose to do it. I think I don't want to eat fries and I just want to eat this shit. I don't want to eat this. You want to fry it? I do. Just one? I can. You eat a tomato. It doesn't have any seasoning. You just think steak. That looks disgusting. No. Steak. Steak. I wanted to talk about this because... I want to talk about this because... You can overdo it? My own personal uh, experience with this, uh, I've been on both sides of this. And more more recently, I'm really trying to self-reflect on my relationship with extra. I told you guys I took most of last week off, right, from working out. Precisely because it's such a challenge for me not to work out. Yeah. And so I thought a lot about this. And, you know, we run into people like this all the time in our space. Personal trainers, people who work in the fitness industry. Where, you know, you look at the data, right? You look at the data and exercise is like a powerful antidepressant. It's so good for health, uh, you know, prevents chronic disease. Like one of the best things you could do for yourself, period, end of story. But we know so many people in our space where that's not true. Where they obsess about it to the point where it makes them sick. It makes them, they develop hormone imbalances. They, they, they develop body image issues. It's no longer healthy anymore. If anything, they're taking um, their life away. They're actually hurting themselves through fitness. Uh, and this is an important thing to, to consider when you're pursuing um, fitness. By the way, the, if you do it the wrong way, you also could just stop. That's the other thing that happens from doing this the wrong way, where you just don't want to do it anymore. This is what happens to most people. Mm. But there's a small segment of the population when they pursue fitness the wrong way, not only do they not stop, but they go at about it so hard and so inappropriately and so dysfunctionally that they actually cause themselves lots of issues. Um, I've worked with clients where this was the case, where they developed um, bone loss as a result, hormone issues, uh, terrible dysfunction. I've been, like I said, uh, on that side of the track. So it's an important conversation, I think. Would you say, like, I guess the majority of clients that you've experienced with that mentality came from a place of addiction already. That, that is a big one. Absolutely. Um, the other part of it is it's they, they're, they're fueled by their insecurity, uh, to the point where they become blind to the negative effects of, uh, of this. I was just recently talking to someone. I'm not going to say too much because I don't want them to feel called out, but this individual, um, I've talked to you before several times went uh, to the doctor because they were feeling terrible. They weren't feeling good. And this is a person who doesn't miss workouts, right? Does the perfect diet, all that stuff. And the their blood results came back and the doctor's like, your, your CK levels are so high mm. that you literally need to stop right now. Um, and you're in danger of needing us to help filter your kidneys out because this is so much damage. And I've talked to this individual before. So I was a little bit more blunt this time and saying, hey, look, you're this is a dysfunctional relationship. You're at, you're you're harming yourself. You know, kind of you know reevaluate what's going on. You know, but you know in our space this is so such a common thing. And the pro and the reason why I think it's important to talk about isn't necessarily to talk to those people, although I hope they're listening, but rather to talk to the average person who then glorifies yeah. those people. So that <clears throat> and that's where my question was going to come from is, what do you tell that person? to be aware of that themselves, like how, like coming from a place that you admit that you would have gone through this yourself. Yeah. You've worked with people that have, what are some of the signs that this really healthy behavior has now dipped into an unhealthy behavior? Like what is, what should they be looking out for? I think we know the obvious ones, right? Like you go to the doctor and you get yeah, 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 yeah. told that your hormone levels are off or you you're just running yourself on the ground. I think that's pretty obvious. But I think where this gets really difficult is when people are in the midst of, you know, really making physical body composition change, right? And people are complimenting them like, oh my God, you look so good, yeah. you know, and then they're, and they're in the, the thick of the seven days a week train, you know, car carrying the Tupperware around and then, and they're being told how good they look. Like that's a real hard time to potentially 
reflect and go like, hmm, maybe this isn't good for me or maybe I'm doing too much of this? Mm -hmm. Like, what? how do I evaluate my relationship? It's with so them? tough. I think one of them is you're, you are ignoring your, your body, telling you that you're stiff, sore, injured, tired. Um, the other one is that you skip other healthy, joyful things in life to yeah. pursue your workout. So it's like, oh, my kid's you know, baseball game is at that time, but you know, I got to work out or yeah, I'm not going to go do that thing with family members or have that date with my wife type of deal. Or you go out and you're trying to have a meaningful time with someone and you're overly worried about the food mm -hmm. that's in front of you. And you're worried about, Oh my God, I'm going to go to this restaurant. How do I plan out what I'm going to eat? How do I bring the perfect, you know, I'm not even going to go out. I'm not even going to go anywhere because, uh, uh, you know, of all the stress and anxiety it's causing, uh, there's another one. And then the other one is just, if, if you have people that you trust and love around you, and that's important by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's gotta be, if, it has to be somebody you really trust. Like if like you're, you're ride or die person, if they tell you, you're probably a little obsessed as hard as it would be to, to accept it. I think if you really do believe this person's got your best intentions, maybe consider that there might be some truth, um, in what those and what they're saying. And then lastly, does the anxiety and stress of missing a workout or not being on the perfect diet for a day or something, does that cause you more stress and anxiety than you think might be normal? Yeah. That's the other one. That's yeah. me. That's yeah. what happens to me yeah, for yeah. sure. It's like when I know I'm going to miss a workout, like it was, it was, I, this it's embarrassing to say, but I missed three days, three days and three days. I was like a drug addict. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was like, uh Oh, how do I distract myself? Start What's going itchy. on? Itchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, what's tough is if you notice Turning too, tricks. it starts to put you in a bad mood. You know what I'm saying? Like now yes. and you're short in a bad mood. You know, you should, you shouldn't, you should be able to not work out for a week and not it change. Totally. Cause, cause technically you're health, you're still just as healthy as you were the week before. My body yeah. needed the time. In fact, it was healthy. I went yeah. back to the gym today. I felt amazing. Yeah. It was just confirmation. Like, yeah, I should probably take some time off every once in a while. You know? It's so, uh, yeah, it's tough because it's easy to see it from the outside, you know, and to break through and to kind of get that person's attention is a really difficult thing, conversation to have. Like, it's like having a conversation with a workaholic that's like totally. putting all their effort, all of their, you know, myopic focus into being successful and it's paying off for them, which is, this is the other misconception to that, which we talk about. It's like that actually pays off in terms of like their sacrifice. Initially it pays off with your sacrifice with your body, but it gets past that threshold where now it's like actually detrimental to your health, which is like that. This is a part that doesn't really get discussed a lot with uh, exercising and fitness in general. I, yeah. I think one of the, one of the good ways to, to peer into it is the same way that you would operating and running a good business. And that is to really, uh, really define your why and check back in with that. Like, why mm -hmm. do you work out? Yeah. You know, and if you say that your why of working out is so I can be healthy and play with my kids and, you know, and be mobile and not have pain and go, okay, but well, none of that's happening. Right. And then you go, and then you go, well, how much of that is really happening? And is yeah. seven days a week and hitting PRs, is it really serving that? Is that really yeah. serving those goals that you say? So I, to me, I think that, relationships. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think that's, I mean, cause I've been thinking about this a lot too. I brought it up on the podcast not that long ago, like, you know, trying to evaluate my own, my own balance of like, you know, what that looks like. And then, so you have to ask yourself like, well, why am I doing all these things? And if you sit now, then you have to then unpack that and go like, okay, well, are my current behaviors around this exercise aligning with what I claim my why is I claim it's for all these things, but it's like, well, is it really, if I sacrifice going to do those things? So like, cause I didn't want to miss a workout or is me stretching my capacity that is it serving those things or is it hindering those things and taking away? And so, yeah, I think much like uh, operating a, a good business and and revisiting like why did we start this? Mm -hmm. You know, what was the main purpose of it? And because you can get distracted by all the things, you get distracted by the success and all the opportunity and stuff like that, and you get so sucked in it, you forget. Oh shit, that's not why we built this. We didn't build it for those reasons. Mm -hmm. Like, so I kind of feel like that's I like a, what you're saying. Yeah, and I, I like that. Uh, I I think you would have to probably write it out because that would force you. Right. Yeah. To like, like to think about it, it's easy to get like distracted or kind of twist right. yeah. where that goes. But if you write it down and look at it, it's hard to not be objective. Yeah. Right. Cause then if you're writing it out and you're like, well, why do I do this? It's like, you know, 
you know, I want to be healthy. It's like, am I healthier right now? Uh, maybe not. You yeah. know, I want to be less stiff. I'm actually more stiff right now. I yeah. probably should take some time off, you know, yeah. type of deal. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And just, it's just, it can easily turn into, it's, you know what it is? It's this incredibly powerful and valuable tool um, is all, is really all it is. It, it is not life, right? Life is not fitness, but fitness can be used if you do it right to really dramatically improve your quality of life. I mean, that's, I don't need to make that argument. That's a fact, 100%. Across the board, it'll impact everything positively if you do it the right way. Um, but like any tool that's powerful, how you wield it is everything. Um, and think of any powerful tool. If I wield it the wrong way, it could cause just as much damage as it can um, you know, in, with benefits. And now for the person listening who doesn't have this issue, person listening who just has the challenge of actually being consistent. So maybe this isn't resonating. Cause like, well, I can't this, even string. This is by the way, the, the reason why I have the hardest time with this conversation. Yes. Because I understand why I need to have it for myself and, and, mm -hmm. and many of my other peers that, um, you know, found this profession because they had some sort of deep rooted insecurity around body image or whatever. Um, so I understand that. But I also recognize there's a majority of these people that fall into that category. They just they they're having struggle just being consistent. Yeah, and I to, don't want to send them the wrong message. Right. So to them, I'll say, here's the value in what I'm talking about. There's two of these. One is it'll continue as you develop this relationship with fitness. Continue to check in with yourself uh, about why you're doing this because it's also a path towards consistency. What I'm saying, if you stay away from that and do this the right way. Um, then you'll actually find the right path toward consistency. The only path I've ever found to work for the average person is 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 the path towards is the path of doing this right. I'm doing this to care for myself. I'm doing this to to nourish my body. I'm doing this because I deserve to be cared for and to improve the quality of my life. That that's the the path towards consistency. But the other part is because if you use social media as a way to consume information around fitness, um, it will help. It's almost like a truth filter. Look through the filter of what I'm talking about at the people you admire the most. If you're looking at this fitness influencer or this person that you're like, yeah, you know, I like their information. And then as you hear my words, you're looking at them and going, oh, wait a minute. This actually looks like somebody that might be having a dysfunctional relationship with fitness. Well, now you could take their information and take some of it and dispel some of it. You know, take some of it and throw some of it away. Like, okay, now I can see that. Everything they're saying isn't necessarily true. And I'm going to tell you this. The, the truth is, unfortunately, the majority of the popular fitness media uh, experts out there are not the 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 type of healthy uh, people that you know we're, we're trying to talk about. They are actually the dysfunctional type. And so if you follow their path, they'll lead you the wrong way. Yeah. And so that's, that's where the value is yeah. uh, with all that. Anyway, I good agree. stuff. Today's giveaway here on YouTube is MAPS Anabolic. In order to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale, Maps Anywhere and Maps Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. So I got uh, some gross news for you guys. Gross news? Yeah, gross. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know if it'll help you guys out, but I, I, you know, I'm going to talk about it because it might help some people out. So I recently discovered that, so, you know, my, I have gut issues that go on and off, right? In and out, I was struggling with them. I, uh, I did some treatment for a uh, parasite. Yeah. Yeah. It worked. Really? Yeah. Tapeworm. Really? No, you yes, didn't have dude. a tapeworm. Yes. Liar. Yes. Really? Yes. Like, Okay. Tell me the process of like how And I say this cuz cuz I know you you know I know you're That's having gut issue bro. It's not as uncommon as you think. It is not as uncommon. Yeah, dude. I did a treatment for tapeworm. It's one it was one tablet. That's it. You take it once. Yeah. And within 2 days, dramatic improvement in gut health. And now I'm like Stop it. I bro, I swear to god. Okay, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm, Pretty much, I'm pretty much like normal. Where did, did you where, did you throw up a worm? Like no, what? no, I, nothing cool. No, like I think that? you just poop it out, and I'm uh, I'm too afraid to look. Uh, to see you're too afraid. Come on, man. I'd be like, you want to see it in there? Yeah. You want to see that? He, was, in he there? wants confirmation. Yeah, Hell no. Bro, exactly. Hell yeah, no. I feel better. That's all I need. Yeah. Dude. I don't want to see yeah. nothing like that, dude. No, what, uh, uh, little you, bastards. I want a little get, shiny pill in there. Yeah. What is it? Is it? Is it not prescribed? Yeah, it's prescription. Oh, yeah. So you do a gut. You do um. 
poop test. And then they can see if you have, uh, you know, if you have any parasites. Oh, so yeah. You, oh, you did. I didn't know you did that. Yeah. I didn't know you did yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and it's not as, uh, thank you. Whoever brought those pictures, uh, I'm going to punch oh, you. Oh, God. That's disgusting. <laughs> so, yeah, because, I mean. That's so gross. Depending man. on how long it's there, like. It, it well, can, I'm going to tell you, bro. With all, this, get- <laughs> all the supplements and shit I take, I'm, I must have had a strong ass. I'm sure this was like a bodybuilder tapeworm, bro. <laughs> bodybuilder. All the supplements Dude, and protein. Even more reason to want to see He it. was just like, ah, oh, you know. <laughs> just had to poison that fucker. Bear him down. <laughs> Dang. I know, dude. Wow. That's so uh, how common? How, you, you were starting to say how common? Parasites in general are are, are relatively common, even in developed uh, nations. Yeah. So common, you know, um, you, if you, you know, you play out in the dirt a lot, you have pets. If you eat uh, unco- uncooked food, sushi, if you eat a lot of sushi, then the odds are much higher that you, you probably said have. That, to me, you know, that makes me want to know. I know. What was yeah. it? The South that hookworm was like a. Yeah. yeah and then you know problem. what really is common? Pinworm is really common with kids. Little kids get, especially if they go to daycare and stuff. Super common. What's uh, pinworm? Tiny little parasites that kids will get. And it's actually relatively common. With little kids. You can get that uh, over the counter, the treatment fact. Now, so, what, what are some of the. Um, symptoms? Yeah. Symptoms of a tapeworm. Uh, uh, lethargy, nutrient deficiencies, um, fat face, there huh? you fat face. <laughs> <laughs> Your face isn't as fat these yeah. days, bro. <laughs> I did, did, today I did, uh, I did a video in my Instagram today, yeah. Operation Skinny Face. Yeah, yeah you got a little bit of Hey, you're gonna have to get to <laughs> like 1% body fat, bro. <laughs> I am gonna have to get that's, to it. That's your stubborn that's, body fat. Uh, it is. <laughs> it your is. Face, hey, it's working as we get older. Yeah. Your face is, like, uh, yeah, when I'm 90, so it's gonna be great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be so great that I had fat cheeks when i was <laughs> a kid like, yeah no. i'll never have to do those fillers right yeah no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no so you, you know what's funny is that t- that uh parasites will actually hide so when you try to do like herbal treatments and stuff once yeah. they start to whatever well, they yeah can, i've been treating like cr- they can hide under biofilms like bacteria yeah and not get touched hibernate and shit and then come out when 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 stu- i know dude bro so, they they co-evolve the humans uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They've been here forever. It's a problem, dude. I know. So I you know, that makes me mad, but also it would be great. You know, that would be like something, oh good, like that's a tangible it's an thing. answer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, yeah. it's been so mysterious and like I'll get some success and then I'll regress. That's how and I was. It's like, oh it's frustrating. All the stuff I was trying to do on my own before getting tested, because I'm a pain in the ass. When it comes to doctors, you know, I just I just don't like I just I'll I'll fix it myself, right? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I was doing was kind of like a Band-Aid. Sal MD. Yeah, I know, yeah. dude. I was just, I was Band-Aiding it the whole time, but it turned out that I had to treat the actual, you know, wow. terrible patient. Uh, my, my daughter kept telling me. What did, uh, what did you guys all do this weekend? Were you guys away at families, have family over? I know John Wick was up. up Bro, <laughs> why, why is Doug, <laughs> hey, why is Doug a, a crime <laughs> fighter at night? Yeah. Yeah. He's got all the silencers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, was the motivation? Fuck what was the motivation for the silencer? That's what I want to know. Is it just because it's cool? Just cool. Yeah. That's it. Nothing it more. Cool. It is cool. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's cool. Can't Does it make a road. big difference? It makes a massive difference. Oh, wow. Except I, I was saying the one for the AR... You shoot it, and there's so much of the I don't know if it's gases that are coming off. Is that the, from the silencer? Yes. Oh, it's, so it's getting kicked back into your face, and it smells Ooh. horrible. It oh, doesn't smell healthy either. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, so they practice shooting it like this. toxic. Yeah, huh? yeah. That's like on your hip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how you're supposed to, right? In that Rambo. <laughs> that's how you're so they did in Predator with the yeah. uh, minigun. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, I, that's what you were talking about. It was the silencer that was yeah, causing that? So the, you'll see it when you get done shooting. There's like you know, vapors and gases and smoke coming from it because it gets hot right but it, it blasts it back into your face wow. and it's, it's really very like like it feel like one of those ammonia things that you smell oh yeah like i mean lifting? it's kind of like that huh. yeah like it's definitely ammonia? i think it's doing something i have to say though cells. i'm not a fan of the this kind of square looking uh silencer like I've, oh you I, I like, like that one, i yeah. like more of the the round look oh you know? okay yeah you want to look cool when you're uh sniping somewhere yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well double anyway double. I mean, that's why we're, we're buying it to be cool anyway but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, silencers you're just like using it down yeah. at the range so silencers like matter. the electric cars of the guns right yeah yeah psst, psst, psst. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh we're so you have kill. one on your on your handgun Yes. And you have one on your uh, your AR, AR or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Now, do you have to replace it every once in a while? Is it always? Too? As far as I know, they're you just got to clean forever. It. Yeah, you just got to clean. Yeah. It. Did you go long range with the with the, the your long gun? I mean, I was in a 
range, I think, I, I can't remember the furthest you can shoot. 70 feet or so? I'm not sure. Mm. Not so far. Mm. Super accurate as well. Well, heard. it is. However, I think the it has to be, my sight needs to be calibrated because apparently the silencer may have affected the... Oh. Yeah, I, I, I don't know enough about it. Have so. you guys ever read about um, like the longest shot ever made? In, in in the military or something like that. it was like a sniper that shot someone like miles away uh, have you ever heard of that i've heard of i that. mean yeah no i've no story i know it's like the record's crazy yeah i it's don't know like, maybe you guys, maybe you can find it there's Doug. so many factors to account for right bro they have to account for the wind the rotation of the earth like earth yeah like like, like ridiculous like calculations they it, make. and apparently like it, you the bullet hits you and then you hear the the gunshot so uh, if you're with your you know yeah. his buddy next to him the terrorists are hanging out right and you just fall goes, over. Your body goes down. What? And then you're like, oh, yeah. shit. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? <laughs> Dang. What's, 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 what's the record? So it's 3,800 meters. So that's over a mile. But we don't know metrics. In yeah. So that's 4,156 yards. So multiply that by three. That's over 12,000 feet. It's about 1.2 1. miles. Yeah. Roughly. Wow. Yeah. That's no, 12, yeah. Is right? that? No. It's well, right. almost two miles, isn't it? Uh, isn't one mile 5,000? I forget just, the just exact number. Just type in Google. I don't understand why you guys... <laughs> you have the most powerful computer in the world. Or, oh. or, we like, we or, like to challenge or, ourselves. We do. So what's that? It's almost two miles away. That is... That's that really, is... Uh, I mean, even just the mile is crazy. That's Yeah, insane. it's 5,280 feet per mile. So it is a couple miles. Wow. Yeah. That Damn. sucks for whoever that was. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That's a really good shot. Was it a competition or was no, that? No, it was a Ukrainian sniper. Oh, so that was actually a recording. This is very kill. recent. It was in 2023. No. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that was the most. Now, so here's the deal. You're in war. How do they confirm that? I know. That's it. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, look, get out the tape major. No, of course they confirm. <laughs> they, they, they have a spotter. Someone who shoots someone a mile away yeah. has got a guy right next to him who's going like telling him the distance, yeah. the wind, and oh, everything. Oh, that's true. Huh? So that's right. tracked 100%. Yeah. 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 Don't you don't have to. Yeah. It. That's not. I mean, I guess. You have to take their word for it, but I mean, I don't yeah, know why you lie. It's just been some propaganda. Yeah, yeah that's all. Yeah. <laughs> like, was the ghost? There could uh, be. Was the, they, they promoted in the beginning of the war? Yeah, yeah. There was some interesting propaganda. You don't think you'd be you know, you'd be tempted like you're you know in the middle of a propaganda war or whatever? You're like, hey, tell everybody. Yeah, let's go. This is well, a I'm sure shot somebody five would be tempted, miles away. attempted, but I, I imagine there's somebody who's supposed to like, of course, yeah, regulate that shit, right? Of course, be like, yeah, oh, can't say that, dude. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. can't be like North Korea where he was like golfing and got like a uh, uh, hole in one on every time, every single <laughs> hole. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he's just a natural. <laughs> that's all real though. Yeah. He's actually that's. A, hey, so I just read a, a crazy article. So here's how you know. Something is taking the world by storm, or, you know, the Western world, I'll say by storm. So Ozempic blowing up all over the place. Yeah. Have you guys heard of Ozempic? Uh, <laughs> I, I saw an article. I thought that was just like clickbait, weird, like what Probably is a that? smart supplement company yeah. that are. That's, no, no. Uh, TikTokers is a, okay. So TikTokers made a drink. Roll, of course, it's on TikTok. <laughs> right. It's a drink made from oats, water, and lime juice. And they're saying that it's as powerful as Ozempic yeah. at killing your appetite. Fat chance of that. So they're naming it Ozempic. How? First of all, smart is that name. Yeah. 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 But second, just goes to show- How uh, big and popular that's Yes, yeah, dude. Yeah, because yeah. it's people are- Now are other side trends are happening from it. I mean, right. the, so I'll predict this. Like, wait till all the supplement companies make a- you know, over the counter type of basic product that is supposed to compete with Oh my with God. It. Yeah, it pairs with the hundred yeah, percent. You know what I just coming. thought about? The Be so because of your experience and other people's experience. So I think for people who are really obese, it's it could be a godsend. But I think if you're not that obese, it might be an issue because like you were saying, it's hard for you to eat. Very hard. Like you don't even want to eat. Very hard. At yeah. all. Yeah, it's wild. It's it's a trip. I mean it's like kinda, you could survive you could just eat five hundred calories a day. Yeah, man. yeah. That's and so comfortably. Crazy. Comfortably, not wow. like not like fighting it. Like, oh, I'm I'm trying to diet. Like, I don't have a desire for food. Yeah, yeah. It's um, and obviously, so you know, so the audience knows too. I was off air. I was telling the guys that like, you know, my intentions of doing this, I'm very aware of the potential bad side effects that I'm going to lose muscle along the way. I don't care. Like, I'm trying to be. I know I can go get it back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been doing this a long time. I can go get off of it add yeah. protein you start looking like machinist we're gonna intervene uh, well yeah. katrina's already <laughs> like messing with me because she doesn't like it and i'm just like you have just, to put on two sweaters uh, before you yeah yeah hang out with <laughs> <laughs> having sex with the parka <laughs> <laughs> why are you wearing a parka it's cold because <laughs> <laughs> it's cold yeah yeah 
So, oh, yeah. just, just the noises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's going to get annoying. They're going too fast. Yeah. Start a fire. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the, the plan is to just uh, to ride it out um, and see what happens. Uh, initially, like the conversation I had with you last time, you know, I'm also trying to reflect on some of maybe the eating patterns and behaviors that I've created for myself over the years. And let's see if it uh, erases that or changes that. And let's see how my health is, yeah. say, in a month or two, and then eventually come off of it. But I really, I want to resist, uh, like, obviously, if I wanted to sell it, I would be disciplined about hitting my protein intake every single day and like show everybody like check this out i took this you're, you're, okay so um, let me let me let me uh repackage what you're saying what you don't want to do is show everybody what an what an what a ifbb pro physique competitor can do by using a zempic you want to show what probably will happen with the average person yes okay 100 percent. because of course it's a, it would be for someone who's trying to uh, lean out period uh, it's, it's going to be a massive advantage. One of the most difficult things, uh, of, of course, during competing was the discipline of resisting the temptation to want to eat, you right. know? And I mean, cause you're going to be hungry. That's just part of the game. Like you, if you're in a caloric deficit for an extended period of time, you're going to have bouts of, of hunger and cravings and all those things. And that is the part that it crushes. I mean, it just hasn't been there. Have you ever experienced anything like nothing, this? Nothing even close. And I've tried every fat loss supplement that's been on the market and done things. It's not like anything else. You said it reminded which you. Which is, by the way, why it's, I can tell now why, what the whole, why it's going You crazy. said it reminded you of when you were a teenage boy and you just <clears throat> didn't want to eat and you had to force yeah, feed yourself. Yeah, so, th so which is, this is again, mm. back to my original point of, you know, I'm going to allow it to do this, takes its course and see if it, if these things surface for me, like. Oh wow, interesting that I'm I'm challenged by that and let's see if it bothers me the same that it used to wow. bother me as a kid because I and this is what I remember as a kid of like who's tr was trying to build muscle and get big like I just did not have an appetite. And so I would be forcing myself. The difference now is I'm not. I'm going to go with it and just kind of allow and see where where it takes. What about me. like your drive and everything else though like So drive to get things done like yeah. uh work and household stuff that's all high. Um, libido, all that stuff. Yeah, just the, what'd you say? Libido. Libido's great. Yeah, yeah. That's all. All that stuff is. Yeah, my libido has been great. I'm weak. I'm very weak in the gym, and like, and now, granted, too, like you have to take some of this with a grain of salt because I'm coming off of. Uh, you were also sick. Yeah, I had a flu yeah. bug. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold right now. So again, I'm sharing with everybody my my process. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not jumping to conclusions until. I've been healthy doing this for month, two months under my belt. Then I'll be a little, I think, uh, more certain about how I feel because th that's a lot of inconsistency right there. Just in those. You want to hear speculation that I have on the supplement? So the supplement industry, watch. Now I'm going to say it. They're going to do it. So there was a category of supplements that used to be very popular in the 80s and 90s, especially the 90s. It was a. It was actually one of the most popular category of supplements and you rarely see this anymore it's not really a very popular category anymore but i bet products like this these peptides like ozempit like uh, semaglutide terzepatide are going to potentially bring it back Wait, uh weight gainers could you see <laughs> serious could you yeah. see so like with adam right now he no, does not want to eat irony. could you not see if you were like oh shit i don't want to eat but i also don't want to go off of it because i don't want to could you see the value now in yeah. a, a calorie dense shake that yeah. you would drink like meal replacement to shake? offset? Yes. Yeah. What you you made a point? Didn't you speculate like you could see like the competitors using it, and then I kind of said no eventually. But yeah. I can see now where the yeah. like it would be uh, an advantage when you're in a going cut. super low cut. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you you stay off of it all prep and before totally. prep and some build totally. and so that, and that's like when you know it's time to really shred. But again, the the challenge is going to be is especially for a competitor who's built their metabolism up. You know, I, I can't imagine if I had... God, this could be terrible, especially with female competitors. If, yeah, who, I, who, who goes so low. Yes, oh, yeah. I could I, oh, no. I, If I would if I would have ramped my metabolism up to, say, four or 5,000 calories a day, and then I'm like, like I used to, and then I'd get ready for, a, you know, a six-week cut for the show, and then get on something like this, I, I would go from 4,000 to 1,000 or 1,500 calories. I mean, it would be too much. Yeah, I would just lose muscle so fast, so fast. Maybe this is now, let's go conspiracy theory, Justin. Maybe <laughs> maybe this right. is how we reach that dystopian future where you get little meal cubes 
You know, mm, where they're yeah. like, here you go. This is a uh, uh, climate friendly. You meal rehydrate cube. it. Yeah. No, you know, you rehydrate. It's like you no, just eat your just ration. The cube. And you're okay with it because you have zero appetite. So you're just wow. like, yes. Yeah. Yep. Climate it's friendly just, meal cube. Right. Fuel. Fuel. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. Back to work. Yeah. Well, Doug asked me a question. Too, that- it doesn't matter either. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that, went, that went far. <laughs> Doug, Doug asked me too <laughs> so uh, uh, if I've noticed a difference. And I think I do. Again, still early. I also was sick. And so that makes a big difference. So we'll see. Uh, like food isn't as satisfying. Like it's not like yeah. uh, when I when I eat. Like I just you don't had, get the same hedonistic. You know, yes, exactly. Did you not have candy on Easter? None. What? Yes. Desserts everywhere. Okay, really? that's not like you at all. Nothing. No candy. Really? No, it's all no over. No jelly beans? That's Nothing. A, that's not one. Not, not one. one jelly bean? Not one. Not Can't one jelly, eggs? Not one. Dude, what's not one jelly bean? Not one I, candy? I almost did. Not, we had, I we ate hella jelly beans. Bro. We hosted, too. Okay. So I had pies and cakes, and our house was full of stuff. Oh, wow. And I didn't have none of it. Wow, look at that. Yeah. I had a, I did have a, a, I'm a, little a, a glass of bourbon. That's it. <laughs> I'm a little worried now. Oh, is he, yeah, a yeah bit of I did have some alcohol. So that was about, that was it though. But that was just purely out of like social. Like, oh, I'm with family. Yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah. I'll have it. And I had some, I had, I had one on ice while I was barbecuing. Bro, I, I ate a, at least 1500 calories with the jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me hear a funny story. Least, How, this is bro. Talk I didn't about eat like, any, man. Just like, winning dad. Here's a dad win right here. So. Uh, you know that like we've now transitioned with Max, not like we don't police candy like we did when yeah. he was a kid. Now he understands. You what already it is. set the ground. You already yeah. set the stage. So check this out. So of course my son, you know, sees his Nana, sees his Nana, sees my mom. Sees, so everybody got him an Easter basket. So he gets like five Easter baskets. Yeah. You know, Score. we go out and we see my my mom's Easter basket, and my mom's I like, come from her right sweet tooth. Like so of course, and she knows how I am about candy, and so she's like. You know, I, I made sure to put some coloring books and some other, like, so it wasn't all candy or whatever. And so he gets it. And, we, you know, we were there at her house all day. And we get in the car. We're leaving. And <laughs> Max goes, Mama, where are all the toys? How come oh. all I got is all this candy? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't even want it, dude. It was so awesome. Great. Like, Love this kid, dude. Yeah. It was so great. Just And literally just took it all out of his, he didn't even give a shit, dude. Didn't That's even awesome. care. Didn't even care that we took that took the can. And again, uh, allowing him if he wanted to have it. It's Easter. We don't do it yeah. a lot, stuff like that. But he was so disappointed that it, well, there wasn't more toys in his <laughs> Easter oh God, basket. That's so we've right. trained him that we give him all toys. The dog know? ate so, half of Everett's candy. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, he's throwing it all up. Oh, oh. I was happy about it though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Both like, because the dog learned the lesson. Yeah, exactly. And Both of them. Candy. Yeah. Wow. Did you guys have family over? Was no. It just so. Uh, Ethan actually is on the East Coast right now for the East Coast trip that they do at school. Oh, yeah. And so he's getting to see all the sites and stuff. He's um, such a great kid, by the way. You, you, you raised such a good, such a thanks, good young yeah, man. He's, yeah, he's he's a good kid. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those trips. I was like a little envious. Like I, I didn't get to do it when I was in high school. Our but kids like, do way better shit than dude, we Dude, so much better stuff. And yeah. it's great. I'm like, he's sending me pictures of all the cool spots. I go to like Boston and, and all the way through like D.C. and like hit up all the historical stuff. Uh, but so he's, he's gone. And so it was just, you know, Everett and Courtney and I, and, uh, so we just, it was low key. We just went to my parents and and then they left for, for Palm desert. But, um, uh, what was it? Uh, Thursday night or Friday night we went, Courtney and I just decided to do like a date night. And, uh, there was this like stupid, it was called yacht rock. Have you guys ever Oh, did you this? go to that? Yeah. How was it? <laughs> it so was, what is that? It's ridiculous. Oh, dude. so was it good? I missed yeah, it. Was, yeah. I mean, it was like. If you're in the mood to 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 listen to really lame music and like try and dance like a white person, you know, mm, like that's the only that's, way I know how that's to dance. your spot. Yeah, and you yeah. put on like a, a captain's hat. Oh yeah, and uh, there was a lot of people there in their like you know yacht attire, and we were listening to like Christopher Cross and like. <laughs> You know, like all these like really soft rocks. I don't stuff. even know who that is, Christopher. Cronin. Oh yeah, it's it's like all like kind of like uh, it, it's popular kind of soft rock. You know, and I, I had a hard time figuring out how to dance. To this. <laughs> like, I was just like, <laughs> you know, like dude, it was like a bunch of Ned Flanders out there. Uh, what what was the up. age group? Was it was it, it old? 
yeah. old. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you were the young kids. Uh, we were the young ones. Yeah, they were all. Like, did they, did they? Did it? Uh, the yacht go out and cruise, or do you guys stay right in the pier? It wasn't a yacht. It was. It was at a club. <laughs> and it, it was a DJ Wait, I playing it was yacht, a yacht music. I thought like, you were inviting me to a yacht party. It wasn't no, even a yacht I, party. I would have been so disappointed. False <laughs> I would have been so disappointed if I would have rolled up and be like, "What oh the my fuck?" God. Is this? You would have, have killed me. You never like believe anything I had to like offer you again. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, it was like in this little club that's like downtown Felton. So it was like, uh, yeah, it was. It was a spectacle. It was good. People watching. Yeah, good you know? time with your yeah, wife, we though? Yeah, good time. We had a great time. Oh, yeah. we, we make, all, yeah. Hey, so, we had a rock. I, I don't want to hear ahead. about you, but you just reminded me of something I actually wanted to ask you guys. I had never heard of this. Did you know um, it, it, uh, David Bowie did a uh, a bond? So you could buy and get seven and a half interest back in 1995. What? Bowie? A David Bowie bond. This is brilliant how this worked. By the way, the reason how this came up was from All In Podcast. He Jamoth was, cool. was sharing yeah. and, and comparing how Donald Trump's uh, stock is like that. And he goes, I think we're going to see more and more of this in the future where people can invest in a personal brand, in a sense, as an investment, that this person's stock is going to go up. And that's what you're seeing with Donald Trump. And he said an example of that was back when how Bowie- How does that work? You put so your name on it, but it's investing in something? So basically what happened with the bond with Bowie is that he basically he tied it to like all of his greatest hits. And so if oh. he didn't pay back the money, you now had ownership of those great greatest hits. Oh my but god, that's they, but brilliant. They, but everybody made their wow. money and he got he gave everybody seven and a half percent back in the nineties. Wow. I didn't know you could do that. That's that, brilliant. Yeah, that, that's smart. Did you look it up, Doug? Yes, right up there. Uh oh, yeah, there you asset backed securities of current and future revenue of the twenty five albums that David Bowie recorded before nineteen ninety. Wow. Yeah. So the the that's how the bond worked was you invested in it. He was gonna give you seven and a half returns, seven and a half percent on the money, but he got fifty five million up front. So he got fifty five million up front that he go take and do with it. The people who invested in it basically were gonna get residuals off of that those songs over the next ten wow. years. And everybody got their seven and a half interest on it. He still got to go g keep his songs, and he got the fifty-five million dollars. Right? Here's man. a fun fact. Brilliant, right? Here's a fun fact: When Jessica was a teenager, she had a huge crush on David Bowie. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell, babe? Yeah. <laughs> David <laughs> Bowie. Mysterious. I mean, oh. look at him in Labyrinth, dude. That's you know, when she just... liked him when he was in Labyrinth. He had those crystal balls, yeah. dude. He was very, you know. I don't know, know what that says. Hypnotic. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what that, I don't know what that means or whatever. She'd been, there's, uh, the androgyny back then was like there's different. A, there's a know? firehouse by our house that uh, that when you walk to the park to take the kids, she'll walk to the park. The firehouse sometimes will be open, and then my son loves to go in there and look at the fire truck or whatever. Oh, and, cool. the fi and firefighters come out and say hi or whatever. So Jessica will text me and be like, oh, we went to the firehouse again. I'm like, you know, it's like the third time. Again. Third yeah. time this week. That's <laughs> that's kind of weird. Yeah. Oh, she's like, oh, they're all yeah. old. I'm like, that doesn't mean mm -hmm. anything, babe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Look who you're married to. <laughs> I think you I like the old Sharpie guys, this dude. time yeah. to sign yeah. the calendar. Send me a picture next yeah, time of who funny. these guys are. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I got them all listening to your podcast. Like, all right. <laughs> that doesn't help, but whatever. <laughs> anyway. So what did you guys do? What we you? had uh, Jessica's niece and nephew um, come stay with us. Love them. Love those kids to death. And so they were with us and we just... Did a bunch of cool, great family stuff, just connecting and, you know, playing with the kids and stuff. And, you know, Easter Bunny brings my three-year-old. I this so Jessica, she's the one that sets up the Easter bass and stuff. And I was surprised that she did this. I didn't this is doesn't seem like a gift that she would think is smart to give my three-year-old. She got him some Nerf guns. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna be cool, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he's gonna blast people in the house and yeah. shoot it all over the place yeah. or whatever. So let's see what happens. Sure enough, that's what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he's shooting people and getting it taken away every five minutes, you know. That, that's <laughs> like, awesome. yeah. But yeah, we 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 had a good time. Then we did the Easter egg hunt and my my one year old actually understood the Easter egg hunt. So yeah. she walked up like I'd hold her hand, she'd walk up to the Easter egg. She'd take it and put it in her basket. I'm like, oh, you know how to play this. This uh, is so cute. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but we had, a, we had a really good time. It was great hanging out with them. There was a, a, a couple nights where we got to sit, because my daughter was with us too, where we got to hang out with just the teenagers. Because her niece and nephew are, um, I think, 14 and 16. And then my daughter's 14. And so one night, we all, a couple nights, we all sat out and just hung out and had a conversation. And then we played, and I don't know if this was a good idea, we played Cards Against Humanity. 
<laughs> I forgot those cards. Don't they have they have like a kind of more family friendly. That's version not the one we play. The, <laughs> you play the original one, bro. Yeah, that's pretty. And I, I, I realize. I mean, so I my daughter, bro, teenagers. my daughter, my fourteen year old daughter, <laughs> yeah, dude, has the darkest sense uh, of humor. She laughs at stuff that I only understand because I'm also that way. Yeah. Oh, and then I got to tell you this: we went to Great America. Oh, is that where you guys were at? So then later in the day, I took them to Great America, right? And uh, we were doing, you know, going on rides and stuff. And then they have these, like, they have, like, a go-kart track there. I don't know if you guys know that. You could pay extra to do it. No, them. I didn't know that. So we go there. That did not look like Great America. I didn't yeah. Oh. So me, my nephew, and then my daughter. And so I'm, like, talking to my daughter. She's, in, she's 14. Like, honey, these are fast. These are actual go-karts. Try not to bump into people, whatever. She's like, shut up. I know what I'm doing. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm like, you know, she's like rolling her eyes. And I'm like kind of worried, you know, because they're pretty fast. Yeah. And, you know, you you can, I mean, you can bump them pretty yeah. hard. And you're a worry wart. When it comes and I'm to a little worry wart, yeah. right? <laughs> Bro, they hit the, the green light goes and she's vicious. Bro, she's vicious. Taking the inside track, pushing people out, power yeah. sliding. Yeah. Then I'm behind her trying to pass her. And every time I try to pass her, she swings in front of me yeah. aggressively <laughs> as hell. <laughs> It was the most proud moment of, one of, the most proud <laughs> moments of my life. Bro. I bet, I bet. That's, she, she beat everybody. She that's got first awesome. place. That's awesome. Yeah. So aggressive. Did What's you see it? that? There's a viral clip right now going around of Carlos Sands, who's the oh yeah the Ferrari driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He he went to a go kart track, like a kids one, like that. Oh, one. but like fair. a more a little bit more souped up ones. Yeah. And uh, he started in last place in twentieth. And you in the cameras, and he had it v recorded, so you can watch the whole just thing. Beat everybody, yeah. It's actually pretty sick to watch him go from twentieth all the way to first place, like just methodically taking one one go kart racer out at a time. I don't think anybody knew either. Like he was yeah. all undercover, like having fun and stuff like that. And it was it went viral. It's all over the place now. You can you can that's see great. it. Oh, that's like when those basketball players dress up like an old guy. And yeah, they yeah. show up. Yeah, to, yeah. They yeah, just ball out. They just yeah, it's school everybody. So, hey, who so, was it, Adam, that reached out to us about the Juve light? Who was it that texted us over the weekend? Oh, somebody was just buying it. Yes, it was. Uh, uh, oh, now I can't, I can't believe I forgot his name. That's terrible. He's one of our great friends. He's part of the Ramsey Network. Oh, John. John, John Deloney. 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 That's who it was. I was like, he, he's getting yeah. himself a juve light. So he reached out to Adam and I. He's like, is this the real deal or what? I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, bro. Listen to the episode where, Ju where Doug, Doug talks about his testosterone levels. Going yeah, yeah. Have you been consistent with it still? Are you doing good? Yeah, pretty consistent. I've been traveling a lot. So when I travel, of course, I can't use it, but. Almost every day, every morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't do it this morning, though. Mm. See, I'm tell. up and down. I'm up and no, down. I, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we talked about it, I was. Right now, I'm not. It's, it's the same thing for me. It's like I I'm, I get on a roll, and then, then I'm like off, and then I get on a roll, and I'm off. Dude, I got to tell you guys. Do you guys know who Jonathan Haidt is? That name sounds oh, really yeah. So I think the he looks, of the look him up. Can you get his, his credentials? Oh, oh, the Coddling of the American Mind. Okay, is that he? Did he write yeah, that? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah. You know, yeah. What is his background? So he's a teacher. So so Coddling American Mind was written by two liberal teachers that uh, that were professors, and I don't remember what. So I know. He, okay, so he's a professor. Yeah, yeah. So he's a professor. Uh, does a lot of research. He wrote a book um, called um, "The Anxious Generation: How the Great we uh, Rewiring of Childhood Is Causing an Epidemic." of mental illness. He's a psychologist at New York University. And he specifically is writing about um, how social media and smartphones are affecting children's uh, mental state. Of course. And the research is not good. The research is not good. He says that uh, rates of mood disorders among U.S. college undergraduates suddenly spiked in the early 2010s. The number of kids reporting depression and anxiety rose steadily every year after that decade till rates were up 134% and 106% respectively by 2020. Similar statistics are being seen in, in developed nations around the world. By the way, that's when Apple introduced its first front-facing camera phone mm. in the summer of 2010. Instagram was also launched later that year. So he's like... He, and he's looking through the research and he goes, this is, this has a terrible effect on us. They have been uh, surveying children and teens. So this is kids themselves saying it. So, you know, teenagers are like, you remember what it was like to be a teenager. You think you know everything, whatever. Half of teenagers. So this is, this is teenagers themselves. Half of them saying they feel addicted <clears throat> to their phones. Addicted. This I is, mean, and that's, okay, these are, these are the, the self-aware ones that are admitting it. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I would I would argue. That I would. That's what I'm saying. I mean, li- I mean listen. That. I uh, so I took four days off, uh, basically from the phone this last week, right, or this week over through the weekend. And the reason why I did was because it was prompted by me getting angry. I was like, mm-hmm. we rarely ever get any hate, and you know, but we do occasionally. And I think that if I go on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube mm-hmm. and I oh. I read a comment, yeah. That it it will piss me off all and, day. Yes, all yeah, day. I know. And I found myself <laughs> yeah, on my day exactly. off in the middle of the day. Like I had this little break. Max and Katrina went away or something. And I'm sitting mm-hmm. there and I'm like still thinking about that comment. I'm gonna fucking tell that guy. You know, I'm like, I it was literally and I stopped myself and went, Oh my God. The fact that I would allow and 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 it, like what made me put it like I sat down and had like this in, you know, internal conversation, like we have millions of listeners we have i get emotional when i read the reviews and the positive stuff that is said about what we've done and yeah, yeah. And i'm so proud of all these things and i'm like so and i and then and i could let one motherfucker mm-hmm. or one post that someone did to attack us or like that like ruin my day and it's like wow like that is that's all me man yep that's yeah. all me yep, right yep, there yep. like that's so i was like fuck this i ain't even getting on i'm not giving it the power and so i've just like stepped away i was having it. this conversation yeah. with my my daughter and uh my niece and nephew and we were talking about it and they were actually open to be honest with you they're open about with the conversation so my niece is remarkably self-aware for a 16 year old and so as we were talking about it she goes yeah she goes <clears throat> Uh, I said, what's, oh, this is what it was. So we, we have this game where you can pull cards out that ask questions and it's good to like, like conversations table, table conversations, something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the questions, uh, it prompted me to think of asking more questions while we're at great America waiting in, in line or yeah. whatever. And I say, Hey, what's one of the hard things about being a teenager? Okay. Now, of course they, they tend to give you, you know, stupid answers or whatever, trying to be funny, but she answered honestly. And she goes, one of the tough things is comparing myself to other girls and not feeling good enough. I said, wow. I said, where does that happen mostly? She goes, oh, when I go on social media. So we had this great conversation and they were really open. I said, you know, when you're, whatever you see a lot of, your brain thinks that's the world. I said, but now I said, look, everybody look around right now at Great America. I said, does any of this look like Instagram? Your, like your, like your newsfeed? Yeah, yeah. And they were, they were all like, no, no, you're totally right. I said, but so what you're doing is you're comparing yourself with this total fake world. Um, and it was really interesting. In this book, by the way, more research, there's, he also talks about schools that ban phones and how dramatically it improves the kids' well-being and test scores simply by, by banning phones. Something else that's interesting, mm-hmm. aside from not letting your kids have a phone until they're like 16 or 17, which by the way, he is asking governments, he is saying now that governments need to change legal internet adulthood, which is 13. To 16. He thinks they need to do that like countrywide. Yeah. yeah. I feel just, bad for Everett. Yeah. <laughs> right when he gets there. Yeah. Get Sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry, pal. Yeah. So, um, so check this out. Jonathan Haidt, and I'm going to preface this by saying this, uh, this is a fact. He is a, he is a very uh, open uh, atheist, very strong atheist. You mm-hmm. know what else he found in his research? Huh. One of the strongest counters to the anxiety, depression, and harms of social media, he found in his research were children of families that had a active uh, spiritual practice. He said it had a very powerful effect in countering what the kids, uh, the negatives that could be found with uh, social media and smartphones. I mean, do you feel like that's because it just, yeah. it, you know, church has is built in community? I think, yes, it anchors them yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. And it, and it reminds me of, you remember when we, value, remember when we yeah. watched Peterson live and like when he made the comment about like, he, I mean, one of the most profound things for me that he said was when he was asked. If what he, he would could, do different? Yeah, what he would do different raising his kids. And he sat there for a minute and he goes, we would have went to church more. Yeah. And mm-hmm. everybody was like surprised by that. And then he made the point of like, you know, it's like religious or not religious, right? Believe or not believe. He goes, but what are you replacing that time with on Sundays? If you know this, because there's all kinds of research to show what happens when you you are in a community like that, and mm-hmm. all the health benefits and how good it is for you. That's obvious. So then, if you're going to choose not to do that and say I'm not going to be a believer, what are you going to do in replace of that? And it's like, how many parents actually go, hey? I don't want my kids going to church because I don't believe in God or whatever. But then what, what do you, are you do? Yeah. With? What do you replace it with? You just mm-hmm. let them play on the, on, you know, call of duty all day long then instead, or you don't, or you don't say anything or you let their friends 
you know, <laughs> teach them like, yeah. what are you doing instead? And so I think that that's probably why I think it points to there's that community. That's yeah. Built without into. it, you think about it, like, how do you reinforce your, your, why, how do you reinforce your, your morals, your values? You know, if you're not like consciously a part of something that's like, you know, deliberately structured to, uh, that's greater than yourself. That's greater than yourself. To point you in the right direction. You just, you know where you get your values. I mean, that's from a the really social difficult, media. Yeah, yeah, it's a really difficult. You, to, you get it from social media. And what does social media tell you is valuable? Beauty, money, uh, fame. Like, what are you, what are you getting from there as a kid? Now, if you're an adult and you have established, like you're already rooted and grounded, you can look at that and be like, you know, that's not like, that's not what makes you happy. Like I figured this out. I'm 45 years old. Like that's not all. You're a 13 year old, 14 year old kid. Like you don't, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. So you start to think that that's what's important in the world, especially for young girls. Like I, I feel really, really bad for young girls who are constantly hammered that their value is in their sex appeal. Constantly they're told directly or indirectly that what is, makes them valuable is how sexy they are. What, what a terrible message to tell uh, a kid, you yeah. know? Anyway. Speaking of social media and stuff like that and lies, did you guys know that Shaggy's voice is not what it's what you've what you have heard it as? What? Did you know that? What do you mean? Lover, lover. Nope. Yeah, that is that made up. What? He was making that I saw that. So that's like, not his voice. Willy Vanilli? He was making he was being he was joking around with some friends and did that voice. And that became his And that became his You know when you said Shaggy, he, I was thinking of uh, Scooby Doo. <laughs> Zoinks! Yeah. <laughs> right away I was like, Scooby Doo. Yeah. yeah. Look up look up Shaggy's voice isn't he's not he's not Jamaican. And so that <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's real. No. no. That's terrible. I did not this whole time I didn't know this. Forever. <sighs> He was he was doing an interview. I think it was on a podcast, That's and I, I I caught the clip. That's and terrible. I, I went, no way. And then he's like, it did it blew up, and so he just stuck with making his albums. Yeah. in that voice. But that's not even his. That's not even his real voice. Does that make I you? Mean, does that make it more? Or does it change like whether or not someone wants to listen to it or not? No. no. I guess not, right? Because it's all entertainment. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It depends on like how you. I, like, it depends on his real voice. What if it's hella weird? <laughs> I mean, it's not hella weird, but it definitely doesn't so, sound hey like guys, that. Hey, guys. You know? Yeah. Did you find it, Doug? I think so. That's yeah. funny, um, dude. How did you figure that out? I just came across the, an interview. It had popped up in my feed, and and I, I clicked on it, and I don't remember what it was titled or what I thought. S speaking of that, that whole world, uh, well, you just mentioned hit, um, uh, interviews and stuff. Bro, the, Cat Williams, all the clips of oh all the boy. shit he said in the past. Oh, boy. Coming. It's all surfacing because of all the stuff that's happening with P. Diddy and all that. Uh -huh. Bro, he wasn't full of crap, was hey, he? Hey, okay, uh, so, by name, I mean, he's I mean, I was, I've been well. waiting to see you guys and 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 see how much tinfoil hat you guys are on this because there's lots uh, of like I've conspiracy been... theories around. Like, is P Diddy just the fall guy? Did they just do the raid so they can get in there and go destroy all the evidence yes. so nobody could tie it? Like, right. what what's really going on here? Yeah. I mean, do you I, like? Is this just like a continuation of Epstein, and this was just like another arm for it? You know, what I'm sure. saying connected and like I all don't the same. Know, all the same people are part of that circle. We got to see what's happening. There was one. It uh, hip -hop, feels like it's tied together. I heard an interview by one another hip hop artist who he's a, I guess he's a Christian hip hop artist who, and he talks about Hollywood. And he goes, he gets invited to these parties, and he goes, and I've seen a lot of stuff that's happened. He went to P Diddy's house for a party, and because they knew that he was not into that kind of stuff, they would tell him, "Hey, at this time." You might want to leave because things are going to get kind of whatever. And he said the first couple, the first time he said, I'm going to stick around. Like I can handle whatever. And he's like, no, I had to leave. He goes, it got real crazy and wild. Yeah. You're seeing a lot, all the artists that are coming out right now. Mace came out, was talking about some stuff too, that he walked away from tons of money and stuff like that. Cause he saw ice cube. Well, yeah. yeah. So what we need to ask more questions is why the royal family seems to be in all the mix of each one of these Epstein Island uh, they always get in discussion. Yeah, because like, was it Prince Harry was like um, part of um, Puff Daddy's upbringing, like uh, his rise to fame, so to speak. Was he? Yes. Isn't he listed? Is it true that he was in the report or whatever? Like there's like a court document and his name is in there in accordance with the whole case. Is yeah. that just bullshit? With the P. Diddy one or yeah. Epstein? P. Diddy. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, yeah, these are all lawsuits. Well, Epstein, what's so his far? name? Was so on who knows if they're verified. But yeah, wasn't Prince Andrew on the Epstein? He was there. He's, there's photos of him there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 that yeah was... well, that's the thing. It's like, um, I don't know. It's it's interesting. if the, Once you start kind of looking further into like 
uh, he's, you know, who's he, really behind. He's named. Why Prince Henry is named in the $30 million yeah. Sean Diddy Combs sexual assault yes. lawsuit. Yep. So he's in, his name is in Prince the lawsuit. Harry. Yeah. Oh, damn. This is all new right now. This just got dropped. Now, what's his name? Cat Williams said in 2024, all the shit's Everything's going. getting revealed. But that's the thing is like he. How did he know that? I, I'm that's trying what to, I'm saying. You, you should look up his origin in terms of like Puff Daddy and like how he even got the fame that he got because he, he came from like some theatrical school and like was in the music and production and all that. But like then got somehow got connected to the plants, Harry. And plant? then now all of a sudden he's like this mega producer and he's like, you know, getting all these people on the label. And so then, the other, the other rumor is too, is that, uh, or conspiracy theory, whatever you want to call it, uh, is that, that is why uh, he killed Tupac was because Tupac was going to tell on him was going to was going to put him on blast yeah. and say something. So, so I read so that I, it was all built into the retaliation for so for the big, Biggie, but it, in reality, that, so the big story is this, or the big conspiracy, overarching just, conspiracy is this: yeah. that Epstein Island and these big celebrities who throw these big parties. They give drugs to people, throw parties, and then they record them. Yeah, it's all blackmail. Yes, they record them doing things that they could then use for blackmail. So, like, you're this tough hip hop artist. You go to P Diddy's house, you party, you drink, you take drugs, and then you you have sex with a dude. You, yeah, you, 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 you do something gay. Butt hurts. Yes, yeah. and then and they're like, "We're going to reveal this if you don't sign this contract, which would kill your whole career because you're supposed to be this tough, right, or whatever." Yeah. Or Epstein Island, they bring politicians over there, have sex with underage prostitutes. We'll use that. So that's why they're, that's, that's the big, big story. Yeah. That they're trying to say is true. Because apparently at P. Diddy's house, every house, every yeah, room, everything was, well, I, I, sh I sure hope this isn't just Epstein all over again where we just, nothing comes of it. Yeah. You know, they just you get all these seriously. crazy articles and yeah. all this. Oh my God, flight logs and oh my God, this person, that person, and then it just like, disappears. Just disappears. But that's why it feels a bit like you know they can they can have like a scapegoat. They can have somebody that's like uh, they can pin a lot of the attention on while they're like uh, he's eluding the authorities and all this and distracting us in some direction. Meanwhile, Is he in custody. Do you I don't know? know? I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. Can you look it up? They've though? been they've been spotting him in certain places. But I, don't I don't think know he's in custody him. yet. Yeah, because because <clears throat> that's the thing is it, it. I don't. I'm not sure this is criminal right now. I think it's like he's being these are allegations. Of, he's being sued and like trying like it's civil, right? It's no, a civil court or is, is it criminal? No, no, no. no. I think no, this, this is, is criminal, federal, bro. bro. They, they 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 don't go kicking your doors yeah, down for bro. some civil. Oh yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, right. he broke laws. Like, I think that they have evidence that he broke some laws. Yeah, and I don't think you. I I think in order for like yeah, the door, feds to come in and door kicking in like that, yeah, that, ain't, like that, that ain't a civil lawsuit. And that's not no. a like oh, we think maybe yeah. <laughs> that's like we've no. Been, you have to have building up. We've been building a case. For, yes, you have to have enough evidence for a judge to give you that uh, the approval to do go kick someone's door. Yeah, down. which but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen anything about him being detained. So no, it looks like he went home. Okay. Uh, weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like they just raided his Which places. Which that's what. Okay, now that's what mm, makes me. That's, that's even more fishy. It is. That's what makes me worried. Like, like imagine char charges get dropped, but they just go in and go get all the evidence. We found of. nothing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, see what happens. Smoke and mirrors, man. I mean, I swear, I believe nothing that I watched growing up on TV. I know. It's man. all bullshit. Did you all ever get it. into the the octopus murders yet? No, we're gonna try try and pick up again uh, tonight. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, my I, my 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 one year old just just randomly decided to stop being a good sleeper. She was like an <laughs> angel. She was like the perfect sleeping baby, and then all of a sudden she's just like, "Nah, I'm gonna stay up till three o'clock in the morning." And just terrorize you guys. <laughs> I, you know, on last week or last thing that we recorded, I was you guys saw me going through it right with my son with yeah. the whole uh, egg thing and, and oh yeah and, and crying and everything like that. It, I I didn't tell you guys this that day, but it it fucked me up all day, like all day. Like I was like so torn on okay, what's my desired outcome? I I, I have to say something to him. I'm gonna say something to him. What I want to happen from it, I don't. I also don't want to crush this this beautiful soul and his yeah. his kindness and all stuff like that. And <clears throat> luckily, you know, I had the opportunity to talk it out with you guys and even express it on the podcast. And then I had four hours or so before I actually got home and I saw him. And I'd say that was the that that was the the first real dad talk I've had, like like a real like a real yeah. talk where I like sat him down. It wasn't just like 
you know, tell me you couldn't do something, you could do something like that's kind of how everything was all thought out. Yeah, yeah, it was thought out, and like it was a little bit of a you know, it wasn't long, but it was like it was the closest thing to a mini lecture that my yeah. my son has received from me yet. Um, luckily, one of my one of the other things I was worried about was that it didn't bother. I didn't know if it would bother Katrina as much it bothered me, and then I found out when I got home, like. She had told me, she's like, she's like, man, I called my mom. I called this. She was, I was so, she was, I was really frustrated. Yeah. She was like, I was really torn on what to do. I said, Hey, I'm just glad you were there because I didn't have the, I've had now had the time to process and think about it. And so I, I, I came home and as soon as I came home, I said, Hey buddy, I said, I, uh, daddy wants to talk to you. Okay, daddy. And so I said, come over here, sit next to me. And he sits down next to me and I said, Hey, how was your day today? Oh, it was good, but it, I almost didn't get in the eggs. And then you could see him getting a little tired. I say, "Hey, you don't, don't, don't cry. It's okay. Just tell me about your day." Oh, it was okay, Dad. It was okay. And and, and I pull up the video of Katrina was recording him where he stopped and he starts crying, mm. and I and I showed it to him and I said, "How come you? How come you stopped and you cried like this?" Oh, Dad. And then he started to get worked up. Said, don't cry. You're not in trouble. Daddy just wants to know what, what you were feeling, what you were thinking, what was going on. How come you stopped? I didn't think I was getting eggs. I said, son, there was eggs for everybody. There's, look at There's two eggs right by your feet. All you had to do was bend over and pick them up. I said, listen, what I want you to understand is you're not in trouble right now. I love you, right? You didn't do anything wrong. I said, but Schaefer's don't quit. And you quit right here. You just stopped. I said, I understand that you might not have got eggs. It might have been hard. I said, but these are the moments like this that all daddy wants you to do is to try. I just want you to try and do your best. I don't think you were doing your best here. I don't think you tried at all. In fact, you took a few steps and then you just stopped and you started crying. And so we had the, and he was like, you could tell he was understanding and he was like, okay. And he's like, okay, daddy, next time I'll be brave. Next time I'll be brave. Okay, cool. So we had that and it was all over and stuff like that. But man, I tell you all day long, I was just like, and it, and yeah. had had it happened in real time, uh, I don't know if I would have processed it. As, the best thing, the best mm -hmm. part of that was you said "I love you" before you said the rest. Yeah, because then he doesn't. He 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 feels like, oh, my dad, he's you know, I, I can hear you. Yes, I didn't want him to think that's. So I I thought a lot about that, right? Because I didn't want to come so hard, like don't you? Like, yeah, or he could misconstrue it and be like, my dad doesn't like me, right? Or right, something like that. Yeah, I didn't want him to think that yeah. he was part. Because like, my one of my biggest concerns was we were. I'm definitely gonna get this across that that's not okay, right? It's not okay to just quit and cry. Like that's not okay. But at the same time, too, I know he's sensitive, and I know that was overwhelming, and like, and I love that part of yeah. him that he's like that. You know, he struggled. Yeah, and so it was a, it was a challenge for him and stuff like that. And then I could tell by the way <laughs> we were sitting next to me, it was like that's great when 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 my when my three year old does some some shit because he's impulsive and he'll just like throw like the other day he took my daughter's AirPods and just chucked them, and he's got an arm too chucked them against the wall. <laughs> And it's like, oh my! So Jessica does this thing now. She, she she'll get mad at him, and then she'll say, "I love you and I like you," but I'm really upset. So he'll get really mad and be like, "I don't like you," and he'll run away. And she'll be like, "I love you and I like you." Like, I love you too, uh, but I'm mad. You know, yeah. so he repeats yeah, it yeah. back to her. Yeah. Dude, it's the yeah. funniest yeah. thing ever. Bro. <laughs> Max's new thing is uh, if you ask him, "Where did you learn that?" or "Where did you get that?" Oh, it's in my brain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's in my brain. Yeah, it's in my brain. That's, That's what awesome. he says about everything. He's oh, like, oh, speaking of kids, I got to tell you guys. the So this is a big win for one of our partners, Paleo Valley. Their meat sticks, teenager approved. <laughs> what was, I gave yeah. it to, I, I was giving it to the, the, the teens that were with us. And teenagers were pain in the ass when you give them anything I mean, remotely know. looking healthy or whatever. They love them. They love the what, meat. Yeah, those are oh, always did you have yeah. family? My boys I was like, who you have like with Yeah, yeah dude. Oh. They love them. Are you are they still with you right now? No, they, they just took off. How long did they stay? They were here, let's see, one, two, three, four, four days. Four days. We're gonna try and get them to come back over the summer and try and stay with us. For now, what was that like? Because you got a you got a household, bro. You got a lot Jessica going on. And I, a lot going on, and then you just threw two teenagers that weren't yours in the mix. Yeah, dude. And then my son from college was with us too. At, oh, at he some was. Point. Too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we had a house full of just yeah chaos. Mm -hmm. We sat. Jessica and I at one point. She sends me a text. <laughs> she follows it up with something else, which is funny. But she sends me a text. And she, she goes, "It's stressful, noisy. The house is a mess." She goes, "But I feel so." fulfilled she goes i oh, love the way good. it feels that's good to have the house filled with people and then i think she realized where i'd go and she filled it and she followed up with you're still getting the vasectomy don't think about it. <laughs> 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 she, knows, she knows where i'll go with that you know what i mean yeah, right pretty away pretty but, it, but that's what it felt like it was like so it was so such a full house and loud and again messy or whatever 
but um man it feels so good you know just to just to have that energy yeah, you yeah. know with everybody together Having a full house like yeah, that it was awesome oh, that's great. all right do we got a, a shout out maybe i should shout out that book by jonathan height i haven't read it yet well then you probably it, shouldn't shout it out there okay you're right oh why, why don't you shout out i got i got a shout, shout out our coaching that's still going right well now. well i got it i got a shout out on one of our guides we talked about trisepatide and some agglutide yeah i don't know if you guys know this we have a peptide guide that our partners at mphormones.com created for us. Is that Mind Pump Free? Mindpumpfree.com. Oh, Mindpumpfree. Oh, Mindpumpfree.com. It's a peptide guide. So if you, it's free, nice. totally free. You download it, costs nothing. And on there, it breaks down all the most common peptides, what they do, what they don't do, oh, yeah. how they work, and all that stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's great. Brain FM is music that literally changes the state of your mind, literally changes your brain waves. By the way, this is backed by funding from the National Science Foundation. So if you want to improve your focus, if you want to go to sleep faster and better, if you want to feel better, literally put this music in your ears and it changes the state of your brain. By the way, you get 30 days for free. Try it out. See for yourself. It'll blow you away. Go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Rick from Arizona. Rick, what's happening? What up, Rick? What's up, Rick? How can we help you? Well, so I have I have an issue. So I did the Spartan World Championships this past November, and it was a three day event. And since then, I've been training roughly about six days a week and doing yoga on day seven. But the issue that I have is is that I did a uneven bar obstacle that I, essentially it screwed up my shoulder. Not to the point where I can't train with it, but it sounded essentially like if you slam on your brakes really hard, almost like a, almost like a grind. Oh yeah. Um, like the, ABS and I've been, in. say again, it's like the anti-lock system that kicks in on the brakes. I know what you're talking about. Right. Like grinding. Right. Speed. Like, a, it, yeah. So that happened on day two and I did the rest of the races on day three. But since then, it's been almost a nagging pain at kind of the, almost a, maybe the nine o'clock, if this was a clock, yeah. it'd be right here in this spot. Yep. And it's just a continuing nagging pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let, let me, um, let's, let's get a little context here. You trained for the Spartan World Championship. This is a three-day yes. grueling event. Your training mm -hmm. that led up to that, I would assume was a lot, a lot of volume, a lot of training, most days working out. Correct. You did the event. I'm done working out six days a week. Now, seventh day is yoga. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you, with what I'm saying, do you see anything that could be preventing any healing for your body? Does anything stand um, out? Right. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> overtraining is a key. Um, I've tried to, I've tried to separate it out with two days heavy and then the remaining days light or functional. Um, yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're, uh, that level of competition and training that, that leads up to that. Mm -hmm. You need time off. Yeah. You don't need, okay. Yeah. You don't need two heavy days and then three light days and whatever you okay. need to take like all light days and less days. Yeah. You need to take like, <laughs> I mean, honestly, you need to take like three days, like, like two, like two weeks off. Yeah. And right. During that two week period, you could do things like walk. You could do static stretching. So you do some mobility, massage. Work. Yeah, but you know, light mobility, not workout mobility, is mm. what I would do. And then coming at it, because here's the deal: you're you, you have an injury. We don't know what the injury is. Where you pointed uh, is a uh, you know what people re refer to as like a rot rotator cuff type injury. Could be right. an infraspinatus or the supraspinatus muscle. Those are the stabilizers of the humerus. Mm -hmm. Maybe a partial tear, maybe a strain. Um, actually, you know, we can we can see right now if there's like a real tear. Can you lift your arm out at ninety degrees like this for me? So bend your arm at ninety yeah, degrees, right? Like, can I see your elbow? Yeah. Okay, and you can rotate that all the way back and then all the way down, and then go all the way down, rotate it down. Yeah. So like right here, it yeah, just I mean, tends to it tends to be tightness. Okay, so yeah. it didn't look like a full tear because you still have the movement. Probably strained it. Yeah. So <clears throat> you're gonna have to take some time off. When you okay. come back to your training, then I would do an emphasis on shoulder mobility, external rotation, and then the rest of your upper body training 
would be very light. I th- I'm thinking Prime Pro and Symmetry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think Prime yeah. Pro. Oh, perfect, because yeah, you got the, 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 combo. the uh, isometrics. isometrics. So I yeah. think you should take off, give yourself a little recovery. You should come okay. back using Prime Pro for all the shoulder stuff. And then okay. in the first, and then and then do map symmetry. Map symmetry, the first two weeks is isometrics, which is perfect. And then mm-hmm. from your isometric uh, portion, you, by the third week, you get into um, unilateral work, which I think is the next thing that we should yeah. do. So that would be the prescription. Prime Pro right now okay. while you're trying to recover for the next week or two. Then when you start feeling a little bit better, don't rush it. Go into symmetry and follow the way that's mm-hmm. laid out. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then... Um, I do have a 24 hour endurance in June. Should I lighten the load when I, as building up to it? I mean, you could do some, uh, well, first of all, you could do, you could be doing stuff like cardio. I didn't say like, that's an, that's a, I mean, we really okay. take off some weights right now, but what you can be doing right now is at least working on your endurance. That won't, okay. I, I just wouldn't push the intensity cause you're still going to compromise some of your, yeah, that's mm-hmm. fair. That's fair. Your, infl- your, your body's ability to heal. So June, so it made wow okay so we don't have much time at all all right well look here we got two there's two there's a scenario here that we're dealing with scenario mm-hmm. one is compromising maximum performance but placing a very high potential for an injury that's going to require much more than just rest and mobility right. or so in other words uh you're probably you're better off fixing your shoulder and going into it with potentially less performance then you mm-hmm. are trying to push the performance past this injury. In my experience, it almost never works out well. In my experience, mm-hmm. can, you know, fear of loss of performance and pushing past or through an injury results in none of it. Like in other words, you'd have to stop. I can't do the event anyway because I hurt my shoulder, and right. now I'm totally screwed. I mean, I, personally, I would like so he doesn't feel like he completely said. I mean, I would, I'd work on endurance right now. What's I, the What's the race mm-hmm. look like? What are you doing it? Um, so it's going to be in Killington, Vermont. It's going to be a 24 hour endurance of essentially you're, you're rucking. And then every two miles they add about, you know, they add a five pound plate and it's essentially going as far as you can. Is that the, oh, is that the Joe Decina death race? That's not the death race, is it? No, no. Okay. No, so- that's not the death race. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you could train for that while doing mobility then yeah. because yeah, you're, 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 whole, you're, you're rucking. You're not. You know, pressing anything overhead or supporting yourself yeah, much yeah. with the right. shoulder. No, just work mm-hmm. on your cardio endurance in the next two weeks while you're recovering and then follow the prescription okay. we said. Prime Pro totally. and Symmetry. Do you have any of our programs right now, Rick? Um, I did the Max Anab- or the, the the anabolic. I've done that one. I haven't done any other programs yet. I just I essentially found you guys probably about eight months ago. So I've been listening and kind of getting information. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so Prime Pro, okay, is is designed to kind of complement any of the programs you're doing. It's really designed to help you troubleshoot injuries like the one you're dealing with. So you're going to use okay. it, which is great. This will be something yeah. that it'll be nice to have in your tool belt going forward, especially if you like races like this is when mm-hmm. you have injuries or issues that are bothering you, you go to that area and there's a, a test that you do and it's pass or fail. In this case, you're probably going to fail the shoulder test on that side. And then there's specific mm-hmm. movements to do to help rehab you in that area. So you're going to okay. primarily focus just on the shoulder stuff right now and probably mm-hmm. doing a little bit of your endurance training and resting, like Sal said. And then in a week or two, hopefully you're starting to feel better and then move into map symmetry and follow it the way it's laid out. Yeah, you you should, if you're doing everything right within a week, you should notice significant yeah. improvement. If you don't, okay. then you, oh, may, yeah. you may be doing something wrong or there may be a more severe Just injury. don't overdo it. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. would be the big thing. Is Rick, like, don't over-intensify it. Like this is all like to try and uh, help heal and, and, and think of it more as like... Uh, a therapeutic dose. Yeah, you truly, you truly okay. could do nothing for the next week or two, and and let the body heal is probably one of the best things you could do. But you could get away with doing so. Much. So the only thing you could do wrong here is doing too much. Yeah, and I, you know, one mm-hmm. last thing I'll add, Rick. You know, they've done studies now on um, factors that uh, increase the risk of injury, mm-hmm. and the one thing that that increases the risk of injury the most, like by far, more than warming up or lack of warming up, more than you know, train too hard, whatever is poor sleep. So in, during this process, I would really prioritize sleep. There's almost nothing you can do. There's no recovery tool or method or supplement that would come close to getting really mm-hmm. good eight, eight hours of sleep every single night. So if you really want to turbocharge this, that's what I okay. would do. And then if you want to add something to it, um, 
you can go to mphormones.com and talk to the doctors there about BPC-157, thymus and beta. These are peptides okay. uh, that can also accelerate the healing process. They won't replace mobility and good sleep, but well, in addition to them, they were pretty fast. I didn't even fast. think about yeah. telling you. If, know, you, if you have, at, if, great, so yeah, have you, are you, have you heard us talk about Transcend yet? The company we work with? Um, oh, sorry, yeah. there was a little side back talk there. Go ahead. Yeah. Are you familiar with the company Transcend that we talk about, we work with, that we're partnered with? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Yes. Yeah, go to mphormones.com, get a consult with them. And then, uh, okay. B yeah, BPC works really well. Really well. And if you combine it with thymus and beta, it's pretty good. Also, another thing to just have for somebody who does well, race. Someone like you, yeah. you seem to like this extreme stuff. So Yeah, yeah. So you, you'll, you'll you'll get a kick out of that. All right. Sounds good. You got it, man. Do you have Prime Pro and Symmetry? No, he does. We'll send that over to you. Okay. Yeah, and I'll definitely get working on it. And um, I'll send you notes uh, for how it works out. Appreciate yeah, I appreciate, appreciate it. the fall. Yeah, thank All you. All right, Rick. Thanks, man. Thank you. These uh, extreme events are getting more and more popular. Oh, yeah. The people love them. I yeah. think people were so not challenged. <laughs> and you that, know that people do it. That's exactly what yeah. it is. And then they're like, oh, my God, I feel alive. You know what I mean? I just feel alive. Because you'll find people that seem to be addicted to these events almost. Yeah. I mean, it'd be, uh, what we should do, we should get better about this is when we have someone like that is like- Ask them why. Or, well, peering more into like what they do for a living and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. I bet you there's a very high percentage of like desk job type of, like I bet it's really rare that the contractor gets out there and does spark yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. No, how, I, how many contractor buddies yeah. or guys you oh, know that do, do these things? Well, that was like, okay, so when we did our um, our- our rival game that I, I decided to do for football. It was like nobody that had like, was a plumber or contractor, or anything, like all the guys that we needed to play, like yeah. didn't play. Cause they're like, no, this is going to compromise like my, <laughs> my like well being, my career. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, you know, I understood that, but it's like, yeah, yeah most of those guys don't want to do like the extreme stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Our next caller is Deanna from Ohio. Hi Deanna. How can we help you? Good, Good morning. morning. I am so excited. Yeah, I actually, I was going to come see you at the Arnold because oh. we in Ohio, me and my brother. And I put that on Facebook and Justin and Doug actually responded to that. So I was so excited. Oh, oh, right. Sorry, sorry we missed that. You. That was Doug's fault. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I take the blame. Doug. <laughs> I take the blame for everything. That's it. Yeah. How can we help you? Okay. So I'm going to read my email. Um, I modified it a tiny bit. Don't be mad at me, Doug. But when I wrote it, I was not had started the SIBO protocol yet. And so now that I'm almost done with that, I just kind of updated it a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I'm a 52-year-old woman, woman. And to say that I need help from my MP guys would be a major understatement. I feel like I'm out on an island all alone and no idea how to find my way back home. In 2020, I got back into a consistent workout routine. By the end of that year, I felt like I was in the best condition since my 20s. Unfortunately, after my brother turned me on to you guys that year, I realized that just like I had been doing my entire life, I was doing it all wrong. I was severely overtraining and under eating, but in my defense, I just didn't know that. In August of September, in September of 2022, everything started to go wrong. I started gaining weight. I felt exhausted to the point I would have to stop in the middle of my workouts. And overall, I just felt horrible. By January of 2023, the wheels fell off the bus and I was barely a functional human. I was lucky to sleep two consecutive hours at night and was rarely able to get five total hours of sleep each night. I was getting migraines every day. I was an emotional disaster, crying all the time. I got anxiety so bad that I was afraid to be alone in my own house. I felt overwhelmed by life every single day. I couldn't think straight. I kept gaining weight, and I felt completely exhausted and depleted every single day. In April 2023, I did hormone testing and found out that all my hormones were low. I started bioidentical hormone replacement therapy in June of last year and honestly thought that was going to change my life and make everything better. But after seeing, not seeing or feeling any progress in November of 2023, I finally gave in and bought Dr. Cabral's Big Five Bundle and Gut Lab. I love Dr. Cabral. I got my results in December and all six labs uh, results showed that I was a hot mess. I have leaky gut. 
numerous food sensitivities, high levels of mercury and aluminum, low omega-3s, low TSH. Um, my body isn't breaking down fats. I'm not absorbing protein. I have an absorption problem in general. My cortisol spikes at night. Even though I'm on bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, all my hormones are still low. I was so just severely deficient in all my vitamins and minerals that most didn't even register on the scale. I was supplementing with Mellow when I did the labs, but was still low in magnesium. Um, I have a methylation problem. I'm not processing vitamin B, so I was completely out of everything vitamin B. My D3 was super low. Nothing was good. All my ratios were a mess, and most of the results boiled down to stress being a big factor of some of the things being deficient. My results showed that I am in a constant state of fight or flight. On January 2nd, I started the seven-day liver detox, which was absolutely a game changer. A week after that, I started the CBO protocol, which is a three-month process. So right now, I am just under three weeks from finishing that, which that has been a life-changing experience as well. After I finish, I have to do the gut finisher to help seal up my gut. And then I'll do a heavy metal detox and I'm supplementing with all the things that I need. By January 1st of this year, I had gained 20 pounds from the time everything had started going wrong. Um, this was not due to overeating, just that my body was so messed up. Since doing the liver detox and being on the CBO protocol, I've lost 13 pounds. But I feel like I'm at least in the mid 30s body fat percentage where I think I've always been. I've always felt I could not build muscle, but I assume that had come from grossly under eating protein and under eating in general my entire life. I feel like my whole body is riddled with cellulite. I feel like I have had this issue my whole life, but it's worse now. Um, I feel like I don't look like I work out at all. Where do I go from here, guys? How can I hit my protein goals while being on the CBO protocol? And in the thick of food eliminations, eating such low calories, meal spacing, and eating the recommended smaller portion sized meals. What program should I be following while in this low calorie season of my life and while trying to get my body balanced and functioning properly? At my age, can I do anything about the cellulite or has the years of starving my body and not understanding the need for protein destroyed my chances? I need you guys now more than ever. Yeah, Deanna, I... I, I want you to get out of your own way right now because yeah. you have just what you've overcome yeah. um is amazing and incredible. And you're doing the right, you're you're moving you're, in the right direction. You're right, you're right there. With the right uh um it, it, with the right priorities. You're getting your health in check, working on your gut health, allowing yourself to absorb nutrients. Because without any of that exercise, diet, like it's not gonna help. Won't do anything. No. Yeah. So you're you're doing everything right. I don't want you to change anything. You can add exercise, but I'd be, I'd be very careful with the intensity mm -hmm. and the application. MAP Starter would be the perfect program mm -hmm. yeah. to start with. And that's it. And I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change anything until Dr. Cabral's team says, you're good. Now you can move into something a little different. Because if you push too hard right now, you may reverse out of where you're at, or you might start to backslide Especially a little bit. Stress related. I, That's right. I hope you can see the. I hope you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like where you came from and where you're at right now, you're you're heading in the right direction. Yeah. And, and it's mm -hmm. around the corner for you. And the only thing that we could do right now is really kind of screwed up for ourselves by wanting it too fast and too soon. I mean, you've gone through this this shit storm for so long, and you're so close now to to healing yourself. It's gonna get better. It's going to get better and, and you're going to be okay. And yes, your body can absorb protein again. And yes, you can build muscle. And yes, you can build the body and the physique that you still- Totally. Like, yes, all the, yes to all that. But just be patient. Okay. Keep, keep, stay the course. Mm -hmm. you're, you're seeing okay, great. Here, you're, let's hear it. Here's the bad news. <laughs> so last year, even at my worst, January and February, I was like, I could not barely function. And then by March, I said, hey- you got to do something, at least try to do one set of the big five moves down in the basement, see how you do, and try to maintain any kind of muscle mass that I had. So I did do that as much as I could, but like literally two days a week. And then at some point it got to like two sets of, of the big five. Just with dumbbells, uh, the intensity was very low because I was so weak. Um, and so then in January of this year, 
I kind of started um, working out again. And Dr. Cabral said that was okay, um, that you should work out. Well, he might have well, he obviously knew how bad I was because all my results, which he didn't see, but his team did. Um, so right now in my basement, one day a week I go to the gym, um, but, but because I have to eat on these scheduled times, it doesn't work out after work. So I go home, go in my basement, and I do do like three sets of some dumbbell exercises, kind of like anabolic, but not like to a T but pulled the exercises from that. So I have been working out um, since January and I feel stronger. Like my dumbbells are increasing up. I do feel stronger. Um, I don't necessarily see a lot of muscle tone, but I see some. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at. That, that's just more good that's news. Fine. That's more good news. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> You're you doing can do, you okay. can do <laughs> MAP 15 or MAP starter. Yeah. yeah, MAP 15 or MAP starter would be appropriate for you. Yeah. And you got to let your body heal. And That's it. You got. You have to understand too the fact that you are even seeing any sort of strength gains and feeling like you're seeing any difference is incredible. Considering you're still in still in the healing process, once you are okay. once you are fully healed, mm -hmm. you're really going to start to reap the benefits of the work that you're putting yeah. in. Yep. And and the only thing we could do wrong right now is pushing too fast, too hard, too soon. Yeah. So what okay. you're doing right now, it sounds like it's a perfect amount of volume. Sounds great. So if you don't want to do what Sal said to start her, then keep doing what you're doing and just allow Cabral to finish the protocol with you and you to start feeling better. Because once you start absorbing protein better, your digestion is better, your energy is going to come up, Nutrients, your strength is going to come up. Yeah. Nutri it's just, it's yeah, all it's going, going to come a together. Pounding effect yeah, all at once. You're there. So You're right close. now on the protocol, I'm only eating 1,200 calories a day. So I'm only getting 96 grams of protein a day, um, which worries me because I feel like the cellulite is getting worse because I feel like I'm paring down muscle. Um, and so how do I, how would I reverse? So, you know, Justin knows this. So he likes you to not eat any food until lunch. He likes liquid before lunch and he likes you to space your meals three to four hours apart to give time for digestion and just your gut to rest. And he wants you to be done eating three hours before bed. Hmm. I get up at four o'clock in the morning and I go to bed at eight. Hmm. So if my meals need to be within my lunchtime at 5 p.m., I don't know how to how I'm ever going to reverse out and get my calories back yeah, up. It's not going to be it's not going to be forever. Yeah. There's an order of operation here. So, it, okay, let me put let me give you an analogy. If I okay. had a if I had a knee injury, I would have to rehab my knee injury before I could get stronger at a barbell squat. It, it would be it, it wouldn't make sense for me to try to get stronger at a squat While you're without recovering. rehabbing an injury. I would just it would just go backwards. I would just hurt myself. Not only would I not get stronger, I would get weaker. So you're okay. in a, you're you you have to finish and follow the protocol, and it's not going to be forever. Yeah. Uh, at some point, you'll be able to eat different times or whatever. But it sounds like we're we're reversing well, out of a lot of yeah, damage. I get it. It's it it's psychologically challenging because you know you that's where you want to be. And to Sal's point, it's really it, the intention right now is to heal. And so like to go through that and just really focus on that and like improving that to its fullest capacity. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a hard mindset to maintain for a certain amount of length. And I was struggling with the gut protocol. It's difficult, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so like, it, I, I commend you, it, it's a difficult process, mm -hmm. but it, you will get through it and you will make it out and then you'll feel better, which then will apply towards, you know, your strength and everything else you're trying to pursue with, with working out. Dion, are you in our, are you in our private forum yet? I am. I have been for a while. I'll tell you that I'm not a huge social media person at all. Like my time, I go to bed at eight o'clock. I work full time. Um, my life's pretty stressful. That's okay. Um, I don't, don't want to encourage it then. I don't want to encourage you to do it more than it because I'm not, I'm not a fan of it anyways, but I would love just a check in from you, you know, once a month with us, just letting you know how things are. That way we can just give you a virtual hug and remind you that you're doing fine. Yeah. Cause that's yeah. all this, this, that's all this is right now. You're doing, you, yeah. you came from so much, you made all the right decisions on how to take care of yourself. You just need to be patient right now and just know that this is, this is just a season of your life. You're not going to be here forever and you're going to get to move back out, back into eating more calories and more protein. And you're going to be able to build more muscle and all that stuff is going to come. Just stay the course right now. You're doing really good. 
So just okay. ch- just check in with us once a month. When, when, if you're feeling like this again or letting us know how things are going, and then we'll, we'll be there to help support you through this process. Okay. And, and if I'm like, if I tend to be, so my life is stressful, it, and, but I don't, I feel like I handle it well and working out obviously helps. Am I doing myself a disservice, like working out like three days a week or what, like when I'm, I don't know, like when life's stressful. It depends. Yeah. It depends on the context of what's going on. Um, that's when I would adjust yeah. the intensity. That's when I would adjust the workout. But if you find yourself getting stronger, then you're probably moving in the right direction. You're probably okay. doing the, the appropriate amount of training. Um, the, okay. only, the only thing I would add would be a stress uh, management yeah, reduction kind of practice yeah. protocol. That would be the only other okay. thing I would add. Yeah. So that could be meditation, be- meditation belly breathing, prayer. Something okay. that that um, really helps. Tai Chi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something that helps with stress management would be the only thing I would add. Okay. Okay. I just I, I can't hang up without telling you guys. So the, I'm going to try not to cry here. But since my brother turned me on to you guys, like almost uh, four years ago, like you guys have really changed my life. So I had a son who passed away seven years ago. He was a personal trainer and listening to you guys each morning just makes me feel, it brings me back to him. Like he was so passionate like you guys and he just loved helping people and he kept it real. And you guys remind me, each one of you have something about you that just reminds me of him. And so I just feel closer to him every single morning. You guys bring joy to my life. And uh, I just really appreciate everything that you do and how much you've helped me. And it went, I wouldn't have went to Dr. Kroll if it wasn't for you guys. I would never have known about leaky gut if not hearing from you guys. So you've taught me so much. And uh, I've told everybody about you. I talk to you guys. I talk about you guys all the time. But I'm going to tell you, one of the things wrong in this space is when you have someone like me who don't look like they work out, it's not doing you guys any favors when I try to sing your praises because they're probably looking at me like, girl, they must not know what they're doing because you're not looking. <laughs> You've probably brought us more listeners than, 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 than you, than you realize. I think they can hear it in your voice, the, yeah. the authenticity. So, um, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. 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 Thank so you. So I love you guys. I, I hope you keep doing what you're doing. Adam, when I met my husband, he sat and peed all the time not just at <laughs> night i love it no pee splashing anywhere but i cannot get on board with the peanut butter and jelly oh, it's food, food, oh. for the jelly, food for the jelly knife for the for the peanut butter <laughs> you win some you lose some yeah. <laughs> can't win them all can't win them all <laughs> Thank you, Diana. Thank you so much. All right. Stay in touch Love with us. You guys. Okay. Yes. God bless. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Right. You, have, you have a good day. Bless you. You too. Bye bye. Oh wow! Oh, too early guys. to get emotional. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I'm like uh, I'm over here fighting it back, Keep man. Me, uh... Yeah. You know, I, I think um, there is an order of operation. That I hope people hear uh, from our communication with this. You can't skip a step um, when it comes to getting, you know, fit or lean if your body's fighting something, if you need to heal, you can't skip that step and get to the lean or the strong or whatever. It just doesn't work that way. So there's really only one way to do it. Yeah. Um, but I do understand the challenge, right? She's doing really good, man. She Amazing. Uh, the, from where she came from? Yeah, the fact that we we haven't had a chance to talk to her until now and she made all those decisions and she's found out all that. I mean, that's, you know how many people that go through this and they never get to the bottom of it and they just and then they just continue to try and beat themselves up. So it's amazing where she's at mm-hmm. and she's so close. She's yep. so close to getting healed and it's going to make all the things that she's doing so much yeah. feel so much better because effortless. It'll feel effortless. There's nothing there's I mean, I don't even have a, a, the the faintest idea of like this level of stuff going on in my body, but even just having my hormones off or going through that process, one of the most difficult and discouraging things is I've trained for so for so long and I know what a balanced diet and what tra- good training looks like and I know how my body's supposed to respond yeah. and then I know how it was responding when my hormones were right. And boy, is that fucking tough. Of course. It's so tough to get up and go to the gym and make the good you choices. You feel like yourself. This is where you, you need cheerleaders. You yeah, when you're, not, people, when you're not seeing the return yeah, in your investment. Telling and you you're so, on the right track. You, but you're, you're close, Diana. You'll yeah. be fine. You're almost there. Hang Keep in there. Keep going. Our next callers are 
Austin and Cassie. What's up, guys? I think hey, it's, I think it's the first. Hey. Double trouble here, huh? Have we, have we done couples oh, therapy yet? <laughs> no, we haven't done couples fitness yet. <laughs> What's going on? How can we help you? Uh, hey, guys. Uh, huge fans. My name is Cassie, um, and this is Austin. Hi, I'm Austin. Uh, we are big, huge fans. In fact, our very favorite thing to do is to listen to your podcast and then we'll discuss it together and like use that as our like fitness motivation. We're our workout buddies. So <laughs> right. uh, it's so fun. Thank y'all for doing this podcast. We really enjoy it. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Some fitness nerdness for you. <laughs> uh, thought you'd appreciate that, Sal. Anyway. But Austin, I'll figure out what you ask. Yeah, I'll just jump in and ask the question, then I'll try to keep it short. Basically, we've been working out for a little over a year now, and we have had fantastic results. We just ran anabolic just back to back to back. We've done it three times now, and we uh, just don't know, should we keep doing that, or should we now move on to something else? I kind of want to use the strong program, and she kind of wants to do symmetry. Um, we're in the best shape of our lives. We've, we're in our mid thirties. Uh, what do y'all think we should do next? You, you, your your wife is right. I yeah, think symmetry would be the uh, yeah be, be a better follow up from anabolic. I know. He's anabolic. Always right. Man. Get used to it. Get used to it. I know. I know what that feels like. Yeah. <laughs> no. So so it, it, listen. It, it's not that maps strong is 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 a bad follow up, but knowing the programming of maps anabolic, it's very it's very focused in one plane of movement. It's very you know kind of one dimensional. Great for muscle. Great for strength. Great for metabolism boosting. But when you run it back to back to back, what ends up happening is you start to create mm. uh, imbalances between, you know, uh, moving in one plane of movement to the other. Rotation isn't really in there that much. You might you get really strong in one direction. Yeah. So and so symmetry would be great for balancing the body out, um, especially following a program like Maps and a Ball. Another good follow up would be Maps Performance. Yeah, Those would be the two ideal yes. programs to follow uh, uh, anabolic with. And you'll, you'll love the results. You'll love the way it develops your body. We don't, well. we don't talk about it as much as we used to at the beginning, but when we first wrote all the programs, uh, we wrote those in the first three in that order with that intent that most people should follow in that order, regardless of what your goal is, was that, and, and really the idea was taking into consideration all those things is like, okay, if we just got really strong with anabolic, what are the things that that program was lacking that would be ideal for the ideal client? And that's why performance is the natural progression of that. Now, what's great is symmetry has unilateral work, has some, it has some components to it that will address some of the things that, we, which came later, right? We wrote that program way later on. So symmetry would work there, but the the true like ideal progression, if you guys were a client of mine and allowed me just to take you through programming, it would go maps anabolic, maps performance. And then you could do aesthetic or you could do strong or you could do something else like that because that one's more bodybuilder focused. And if that's not a goal, then you I wouldn't necessarily push you in that direction. But those first two, I think, make a huge difference to follow them in that order for that reason. Well, I, I guess you won the, we're doing symmetry. <laughs> I, guess. Man, I, I have been tiny my whole life. I was like 145. And after doing this program, I'm like 175. And I'm Whoa. not a small guy anymore. Hey. Wow. It was amazing, dude. I'm wearing my mind pump shirt. And wow. I just, Dude, hold on, you it, killing man. it. Hold on, you gain- I want I want to go straight to strong, man. <laughs> hold on, you gained 30 pounds of uh of uh, <clears throat> mostly lean body mass. That's phenomenal. I know, I know. She had great results too, but I'm not going to tell her weight. Yeah. But she can if she wants to. <laughs> I, I lost like 70 pounds of body fat, and I don't know how much muscle, but. Oh my God, during this whole process. Yeah, wow. the two of you have yeah, really yeah. done wow. an incredible transformation. Wow. We did need you, to see some. Pics. I know. Did you guys do like before and after? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were going to, but I, I don't know. I was a little yeah, nervous. They say no, <laughs> no before and after. So we try not to focus too much on like. The looks. Uh, that's oh, hey, it's even better. It's a better hey. answer. Like, yeah. Kids at home and stuff. Hey, so. Good answer. Oh my good, god. Good answer. I didn't think I could like you more. Yeah. No, yeah. So <laughs> listen. Here's the deal. You're not going to compromise muscle gains by following a program like performance or symmetry. No. It's actually going to continue to enhance. Be very preventative. Yeah, because if you keep following anabolic, and th- people fall in love with that program because of the, the of the gains that they get, especially when they first get started. But the, it'll slow down if you don't address those other issues. So uh, symmetry, performance, 
that's going to keep you moving in this direction. That's going to keep yeah. you moving forward a, at this nice pace. A muscle building hack to always remember is one of the best ways to stimulate growth is novelty. Mm -hmm. And so when you change to a program, changing to something that is is very unique and compared to the, what you were doing before will stimulate. Even if it sounds weird, it's different. Oh, it's performance and we're going to be doing all this unilateral work. And I don't know if I really want but because that's so different from anabolic, it's it's going to f make your body want to build more muscle. So even though it doesn't seem like it's a muscle building program, yeah. it will absolutely continue to do that. Especially totally. if you got your diet in line and yeah. everything else. Get ahead of that yeah. plateau. We're working on that. Yeah, for yeah sure. that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Man, how exciting! That's so wow. cool. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So and you guys got kids? You said two. Yeah. Two boys that listen to Mind Pump almost every morning when I drop them off to school. <laughs> oh, man. I'll watch the bad words that we say sometimes. Sorry about the no, no, no. He'll be okay. They hear worse from my mom, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just tell them your mom. They're three and six years old, so they're they're tiny mites. We're trying to keep up with them. I think that's really the big thing for us. Yeah, that's awesome. That's All right, so we'll send over symmetry, okay? that's That'll be the next program for you. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. Yeah, we appreciate the guys. support. All right. No. Holy Toledo. Wow. What great results. <laughs> you know what's crazy? When you That's look at cool. she said she was down 70. 70. She was down 70. He's, He's up, up 30, 30. Of lean oh, body. What? You know what's crazy? When you look at the data. Incredible. I remember reading data on couples. Uh, and I remember reading this because you, you guys know the gym over there on um, Santa, Santa Teresa. We all worked there and ran that club. And there was a, um, a gastric bypass program across, across the street. street. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. sometimes it would send over patients who would have gastric bypass uh, procedures. Yeah, I had a few of those. And I, I, I dived into the data. And I remember reading data on couples where if one person mm -hmm. pursued health and fitness, lost a lot of weight, transformed themselves, and the other person didn't. It was like a divorce. The divorce rate yeah. skyrocketed. But there's another side to that. When a couple pursues health and fitness – together, um, their divorce rate, uh, yeah. it, it drops considerably. And the results are exponential. Obviously and you see the that. stick rate is very high. It's much yeah. higher. People are much more likely to make it to, to maintain sustainable results when that partner follows it with them. So it's really great to hear. You that. know, there was a, there was a, a point in my, my dating a career back in the day. <laughs> it's a career. You did have a career. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When, when, I, resume. when I <laughs> when I I actually dated a lot of girls early on that weren't really hardcore fitness chicks. And I my thought process back then was I, I'm so obsessed with the gym that I we don't I don't need a partner yeah. who also is. And so yeah. like having a girl that was more balanced uh and didn't really care about that. But then I realized too that over time when I'd be dating them, like I had my moments of weakness and if I have those moments of weakness where I'm like, oh, let's go eat this or let's, oh, let's take it. Like that girl who doesn't care about working out was like, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Right, uh, pulling me in that direction so much. Uh, I realized, oh, yeah, wow. Here's a cigarette. Even yeah. being the, even. <laughs> <Wow>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa. I'm escalating. I'm thinking a slice of pizza. Yeah, okay. yeah. Chicks, you think I was dating Justin? I mean, come on. I've, I've met him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has met him, bro. You've known each other for a long time. He hit the nail on the head, uh, didn't he? Uh, but that. yeah, I think having a having a partner, man, to to help you stay in line. Hundred percent. It's so hundred percent. Such a it's such a big difference. I don't know how many times Katrina. Not what's beautiful is when you're like aligned like that. Everybody is. Yeah, is, one's off, the other one's on. Yeah, the other and one's on, on. And so then yeah, she's like, oh, let's have a burger. And I'm like, no. Then we don't. It's like, man, having that partner who's doing that with you makes totally. a huge difference. Our next caller is Nicole from Arizona. Hi, Hi Nicole. Nicole. Hi guys. On? How are you doing? What's happening? This is. Whoa, this is really cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm geeking out a little bit right now. Sorry. All right. What can How are we, you guys? Good, good. What can we do for you? Um, so my question is regarding um, how I've gotten stuck with my squat and deadlift. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if you guys have any advice for someone who tends to pinch their um, sciatic nerve when they're squatting or deadlifting. Um, so I've been working out for a while, but consistently I've been weightlifting for a couple of years. Um, I discovered you guys over a year ago and uh, started anabolic and it's amazing. I can't believe how strong I've become, but I can officially bench press what I squat and I'm not some freak of nature that can, you know, bench press that much. Um, I'm just that weak with my squat. So when I was a child, I was diagnosed with scoliosis and it was one of those things that the doctor said I would kind of grow out of. But once I got into my twenties, I noticed that I have back problems and about once a year I'll pinch my sciatic nerve. And when I was younger, I would do it 
doing dumb stuff like unloading the dishwasher. But now that I've learned to kind of uh, focus on my core strength and I've been working on you guys' programs, um, I always do it squatting or deadlifting. And last time I did it with a deadlift and I couldn't work for over a week. I have a hard time like just getting out of bed or lowering myself onto the toilet. It's really painful and it's really scary. So I was wondering if there's anything you guys can help me out with. Um, just to let you know, I am running performance now and um, I am also utilizing Prime. Um, I work on my mobility every day. I go for walks every day. I'm trying to do everything I can to make sure that when I hit 40, I'm not just this immobile person who has back and hip and all the terrible joint problems. So I'm wondering if you guys can help me because I, I want to be stronger and I know that I can be stronger. How, how are the mobility days right now serving you? Can you tell a difference when you're doing them? Or I, I mean, how do you feel from the mobility work inside performance? So I can tell that my squat depth has gotten better and I actually um, do what you've recommended a lot, Adam, is when I'm, you know, just watching TV, I'll just sit in a squat position or I'll sit in the pigeon and it's really helped with my squat depth, but I don't know if maybe it's psychological, but every time I squat, I have this fear and I, I almost like feel my lower back engage mm -hmm. when I'm squatting. It doesn't hurt. But the next day I feel like it's almost hard to get pants on. Is it and still happening? Are you still, yeah. you still, is that still happening now through, through uh, performance? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, it wasn't let's... as bad during anabolic, but now that I'm running performance, I feel like the more unilateral work I do, the worse it's getting. Oh, Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so hold on a second. Let's see. Uh, have you had your scoliosis looked at recently or as an adult? Not as an adult. No. Okay. And because I'd like to know if it's coming from your spine or if it's your sciatica getting, uh, pressed on by your piriformis muscle or your mm -hmm. hip, because those are two different things, right? You could have the, the, the issue could be coming from the spine and who knows what could be there. If there's a bulging disc, which isn't a big deal, by the way, most people have some kind of a bulge, um, in their disc, or it could be that you have, you start to generate tightness in the muscles that stabilize the hip and those muscles, the piriformis in particular mm -hmm. will press on they the sciatica. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I would get that looked at. And then the, have you ever used the foam roller for the piriformis muscle? Do you know which muscle I'm talking about? Like when you sit on a, a lacrosse ball. Is it when you're laying on your back and you're rolling no. it back and forth it's like, like your you lower back? It's like when you cross your leg. Right. You cross it. You cross oh. over, and, you, and, you, and you're going to roll back on it like you're. It's ankle. really you could really I mean very easily you Google um, piriformis, uh, piriformis or... foam roll. Yeah, and you'll see okay. pictures on how to do it. Yeah. And I think that'd be a really good idea. So for some people, so I don't know if it's coming from your spine or your hip, but if it's coming from that muscle. Some people start to develop a stability pattern in their hip, which I'm leaning in this direction because you said something that um, that points in this direction, which is that the unilateral work yeah. may be making it worse. If it was coming from the spine, then unilateral work would not make it worse. It would be the bilateral work with the heavy load that would cause more of a problem typically, okay? So I could be off, but that's typically what you see. Unilateral work can sometimes make sciatica worse when it's coming from the hip, and when it's the it's move it's it's patterns in muscle recruitment, where what ends up happening is because of lack of stability, yeah. uh, the certain muscles stay kind of tensed yeah. all the time. Now, if you did a part overly aggressively, so yeah. Tense. So if you did a piriformis foam roll, um, you would know. You get on that muscle and be like, oh my god, there mm -hmm. it is. In fact, do you get a lot of relief from pigeon and similar stretches in your sciatica? I do. Yes. I like the, I think it's similar. I like sitting in a chair yes. and then doing my legs okay. sideways and pressing down on my knee. Right. That really helps. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're basically yes. going to do that on the foam roller. That's yeah, what yeah. that is. And then, but you lean on that hip of the leg. triggers that spot. Yeah, yeah. So the leg that's up, I don't know if you could see me here, but the leg that's up, that's the side that I'm stretching. Right. So then what I do is I'm sitting on a foam roller, like I'm sitting on a log and then I lean, tilting your hips and I your... lean on the side that's stretching, and then I slowly roll down until I hit the piriformis muscle. And you can look that up so you see where it's at. And, breathe and you'll it. feel it right away. Have you done any oh, deep okay. tissue massage? Um, I have, and the, the when I have the massage in my leg area, it usually causes 
the the teardrops. I usually <laughs> yeah. cry a little bit when that happens. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not crying, but <laughs> see what try doing what Sal's saying right before you do like a squat or a deadlift and yeah. see if that dramatically makes a difference. Yeah, because what, so what 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 it's going to do is when you press on like deep tissue massage does this too. When you yeah. press on a muscle, and so what's happening here? It's just self inflicted. When basically. I'm sitting on the, when I'm doing this cross legged stretch, okay. I am stretching the piriformis muscle, so I'm opening it up. Then when I lean on the foam roller, I press on it. And what this does is it sends a signal to the central nervous system to relax the muscle. So this is why when you get a massage, you have a knot, they press on that knot, and then you get release, and the knot kind of goes away. It's not like there's a literal knot. It's literally the muscle is kind of tensed. The central nervous system reacts to the pressure initially by tightening up a little bit, but then it relaxes. By the way, to encourage this, deep breathe while you're in that painful position because you're yeah. going to want to hold your breath. It's going to be painful. Yeah. And this is a practice you want to continue like before your workouts. And this is, this is actually one of those situations where you need to unlock the ability for you to move and uh, to, to feel like you're not, your body's not overcompensating, trying to, to make up for that lack of stability. So it allows you to actually do the unilateral train, do the multi-planar yes. type movements uh, to strengthen it. So you got to, you know, slowly, gradually build back that, that strength and support. Yeah. System. I would, I would do the foam roll thing that I'm saying twice a day and I would do it before my workout. It won't take you more than five minutes. Um, and what this will do is get the central nervous system to kind of get out of the way a little bit so that you don't revert back called as the easily. Overbearing mother. Yes. That. That's yeah. great. That's great. Uh, a great analogy so that your body doesn't revert back to these patterns where um, you start to, you know, uh, cause these, these issues. Do you have maps prime pro or just prime? Uh, just prime. Okay. Also on the mobility days, I'd like for you to do the 90, 90 drills that we have in prime pro, but only if you foam roll your performance, otherwise you'll make things worse. So you got to do okay. the foam rolling and then do the 90, 90 drills. And mm -hmm. that should help with stability in the hips. Cause I think that's what's happening. Okay, perfect. Thank yep. you so much guys. No yes. problem. We'll uh -huh. send that over to you. Thank you. You guys are amazing. I really appreciate it. You have no idea what you've done for me, especially since I'm going to be rounding 40 soon. And you guys have really changed my life with what I'm capable of now. And I really appreciate that. That's awesome. You guys are amazing. Uh, you look like a baby, Thank by the you. way. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right? Aw, thanks. Yes. Go yeah. on. Uh, yeah, you do. You do. Uh, yes. I know how I look. <laughs> thanks, Nicole. You look great. All, right. All of you look thanks. great. Yeah. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks for lying. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you have a great day. All right. The sciatic, just for people listening, the sciatic pain coming from the hip is sucks. It hurts. It can last a long time. I've almost, I almost, this I haven't so almost common. I have an almost 100% success record with people when yeah. it comes from the hip. It's like such a so much piriformis, like overactivity. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I can almost always fix it if that's where it's coming from. A big part of why I couldn't do the deeper than 90 was because of that. Mm -hmm. And once I did get all the mobility work and, and got to a point where I could deep, really squat really deep and comfortable, it's completely gotten rid of it. Yeah. By yeah. the way, for people watching and listening, like, you know, the, the, the discrepancy or the difference between this coming from the spine and the hip is profound. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know the difference, the application could actually make things worse. If this is not coming from her hip, um, then uh, the, what I'm saying wouldn't really help. Um, uh, and, and the unilateral stuff would help low back stuff. But the fact that the unilateral stuff was hurting her tells me it's coming from the hip uh, stability. So that's for the trainers out there uh, yep. that are watching. By the way, we have a course for trainers where you learn a lot of this stuff. Um, so check it out. Anyway, look, if you love our show, we have a free fat loss guide, mindpumpfree.com. Learn how to burn body fat the right way with our free guide. You can also find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram, Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram, Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram, Mind Pump Adam.